Hello and welcome to a live episode of Popped Culture on Deprogrammed. I am one of your hosts, Carrie Smith. I'm here with one of my best friends, Mr. Chris. How are you, Mr. Chris? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's good to be back with you. Good yes. to hang out. I'm looking forward to a fun night. I need a mood picker upper because life has been throwing me a few curveballs and I was like, but tonight I'm going to hang out with Mr. Chris and we're going to talk about Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. I can't believe I get to do up. this. Yeah. yeah. We've been wanting to do this show for a long time. And so we're going to have some fun. Um, I know this, this episode could easily be six hours long. We don't have that much time. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we might do maybe two, two and a half hours or so. So we're going to miss a lot of shows. I know there'll be a lot of people disappointed that we didn't mention our favorite shows. And we apologize for that. And also we apologize. We're going to go from 50s all the way to 2000s. But we're going to concentrate mostly on 80s and 90s because that's one what carrie and i know best and two that's really the peak of cartoons in terms of uh quantity in the 80s and then it was very slow decline quantity wise you can you could argue uh quality uh, when that started to climb but certainly quantity started to decline in the 90s so we're gonna be talking about all that we're gonna, gonna also uh show some of our favorite toys we had when we were growing up yes at the end so, so tonight is a night of nostalgia. Hope you brought Yeah, you're going to OD on nostalgia. Yeah, we're going to talk about when Saturday morning TV was great. Make it great again. <laughs> <laughs> Make it great again. Um, hello to the chat. Hello to the regulars. Dobbled says late and programmed. LOL. Ha ha. Thank you for your patience. Also, Adam Worrell says, I'm beginning to think Carrie's blacker than Chris. Hmm. <laughs> What's that referring to? <laughs> uh, yes, I thank you for your patience. I was guesting on uh, Nina Infinity's Rumble exclusive um, show. And so thank you for waiting. Also, uh, we are simulcasting this show on Rumble. So we'll try and check in over there and see if there's any people leaving comments over there. A couple of super chats before we get started. GJJ, thank you so much, dude. Member for over a year. He says over a, a year. Hail all. Thank you, GJJ, member for 13 months. You can become a member here at YouTube if you want to support our channel. And you can also, you can do that here at YouTube. You can do it at local, subscribe star, or Patreon. And we appreciate it. Uh, Pirate Tomsky. Hello, Pirate. For five pounds, thunder, 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 cats. Who, can you sing that? Thunder, 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 cats. You didn't do the who? <laughs> oh. oh okay <laughs> you can see i didn't actually watch Thunder we're gonna get we're gonna get i know we're gonna Who learn you we're gonna learn what we watched and what we didn't watch <laughs> i didn't watch thunder Cons, i know what it is though i'm gonna have to ask you to leave carrie uh my girl and pinkova of the politically incorrect knitters is here good to see you and i see some other knitters in the chat including uh give it up for one of our mods, uh, where is she? I saw her in here. Two sisters and some yarn is happy you're back. Yay, my man. <laughs> and uh, GJJ for $5. Thank you, GJJ says the, the best was the original Johnny Quest. Johnny Quest. It's out on your list? Uh, yeah, I put it on the list. It's in the 60 section. And Pyrotomsky, member for 14 months and one of our mods here with the wrench. Pirate Pyrotomsky says, Yar, super chat your fave shows. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Johnny Quest is someone's. We also put a poll up for your favorite decade. And we'll see at the end. I have a feeling the 80s is going to win. Oh, look. Yeah. Just based on the age demographics, I think most people are around our age. So people are like, yeah, the 80s. Look at that. Already at 49%. I cast my vote for 90s. You did? Well, I can't vote, but uh, I would. Why can't 90s. you vote? Well, I have to open up another screen and then have to log in. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Somebody vote for Mystery Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I need you to recreate the last election and cast a vote for me <laughs> several times. 
yes uh pirate tomsky i didn't say yar you all i always imagine a yar before your comments <laughs> you babies okay enough of that we're gonna have some fun so where should we start um so i guess we could start in the 50s uh you think that's yeah, let's... you can do this. We start in the 50s and go through it that way. I can give a brief overview of the rise fall, or we can just start 50s and go from there. Let's start in the 50s. All I, right. I think uh, I wasn't very familiar with these, and I think maybe our audience may not be as familiar with some of these either. So here we go. So uh, first one, let's start off Crusader Rabbit. So Crusader Rabbit was a cartoon series that premiered in 1950. This was the first cartoon series ever to be broadcast on television. And so I had never heard of it till I was researching for the show. But uh, let's take a look. It's, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> United States to wipe out the whole state of Texas. What? Obviously, it <laughs> must have been Crusader Rabbit. Or who else would have thought of such a wonderful idea? Now, Crusader Rabbit had big, big ideals, as you can see. And when he wasn't out on a crusade, he was reading about other bold and fearless men. So Galahad rescued the fair maiden from the wicked dragon, and they lived happily ever after. Notice how cheap this he is. He was probably the smallest rabbit you Practically ever did. no movement. It's just yeah. stills. It's just stills. Voiceover. Should we watch more of him? Nah. <laughs> this doesn't seem to be a lot of the Star Trek Crusader Rabbit because I've never heard of this. And I don't ever think there was attempts to, well, I guess there was some attempts to kind of bring it back, but nothing on a scale, you know, like Scooby Doo and Alpha and the Chipmunks and stuff. Yeah. I had never heard of this. I'm curious. Did anyone in the chat watch Crusader Rabbit? But you said this was the first animated show. Yeah. First one. And so, yeah, there wasn't a lot of animated shows when I can tell from the 1950s. There were a lot of live action stuff, which we're going to talk about some of the live action stuff because I, I, I throw that in with saying more cartoons and weekday shows, of course. But yeah, there wasn't a lot of animated shows and a lot of the shows animated and live action were Western themed. A lot mm -hmm. of shows premiered on primetime and then were repurposed years later for Saturday morning. And so... Um, the next one, I think you're hovering over the Lone Ranger. Uh, that I don't have to introduce the Lone Ranger. Everybody knows the Lone Ranger. Even though that movie that came out a few years ago sucked. By the way, this is totally going to be demonetized. This video, and uh, which is fine. A lot of most of our videos are demonetized. However, some of them are also they get strikes if we show a lot of content but that's what this that's what pop culture is about we want to watch on pop culture we look at pop culture through the lens of culture what what made pop culture great what's made it some of it bad how how it's influenced culture and vice versa and um so we have to show clips so if if this one gets taken down it will be on rumble just fyi mm -hmm. Ranger. Everyone's heard this song. Is there yeah. a single person on the planet that hasn't heard this song? Everyone's heard it. You might not be able to place it like, oh, what does that song belong to? What's that name? Everyone's heard of it. Now, why are you including this with animated? Well, I'm including because Saturday morning, even though we say Saturday morning cartoons, I'm including it because of children's programming. It's the oh. whole experience of Saturday mornings, which included live action and cartoons. So live action and cartoons. So, but this was a Saturday morning kids programming. Okay. Originally it was, was prime time and then repurposed. And so they had a lot of shows, like even through the sixties, Flintstones, Jetsons, Alvin and the Chipmunks, which is the Alvin show, which we'll talk about in a minute. But those shows all premiered um, prime time and then, years later were put on Saturday morning. Got it. Okay. And I assume that's why you have Howdy Doody on your list. Also. Yeah. Howdy Doody. Which the first time I heard about this was from, guess what movie? Back to the Future. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's the first time I heard of it. It was 
Doc Brown was, uh, had that on the background. But Howdy Doody, uh, also Western themed, takes place in a Western town. And it features a very creepy puppet. Howdy doody, doody doody, ho ho ho! Well, howdy doody, kids, and, and hi, Mr. Smith. Hi, little guy, howdy. And Clarabelle, look at all the kids at home and all the kids in the gallery. What time is it, kid? Howdy doody time. <laughs> Precious wax. Yes. <laughs> Oh, you're so bad. Okay, so this was this is kind of all these three shows. You're saying this is sort of what was around for kids Saturday mornings in the fifties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this uh, Howdy Doody started off as a radio program or a character that Buffalo Bob Smith would do on the radio, and then he turned it to a show. So it started off forty seven, and then this show. Oh, all right. Yeah, this show is 47 also when uh, it started. So this ran for 13 years. You're not. Yeah, it was very popular. Yeah. The In the 50s, also, it was the, sort of the heyday that the late 40s and the early 50s is the heyday of Western um, Western programming, Western influences in pop culture. Um, this is when you saw the rise at the same time of all the cowboy stars like Gene Autry and uh, Roy Rogers. And, and so this is sort of a, I think it's very symbolic of the time and what was popular. Although look at that clown. Creepy clown. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Do you think we could sing yell howdy doody before Mr. Buster tries to come and get us all upset? All right. Now look, all you boys and girls here in the peanut gallery, when Clarabelle tells you to yell howdy doody, let me hear you yell it. Howdy doody, come on. Howdy, howdy, howdy. All right, now how about all the boys and girls at home? Let me hear you yell howdy doody. Let's see. Howdy. That was good. Do you understand that now, kids? <laughs> yeah, they not. They do. All right. Okay. <laughs> do you think your kids could like sit still for like a show like this? These things? No, not without devices. <laughs> I think most kids are, they've been raised these days on devices. They would be, mm. they would, their attention on the cell phone. <laughs> no, they wouldn't sit there for something like this. <laughs> well, it's interesting. So, uh, I don't know, you don't have to play this clip, but the, I, I put a clip in there from the last episode of Howdy Doody in 1960. And that clown, Clarabelle, never talks until the very last episode at the very end. And right after he talks, and they fade to black. You can hear like kids crying <gasps> in the audience because they're so sad the show was over. Oh, not because they were scared of the clown. I'd be crying. Okay, so not a lot in the 50s. And that's one of the reasons that we didn't put in the poll. We could only pick four options for the best decade for cartoons. And only one of these was a cartoon. And also there weren't a lot of, there, were, there weren't a lot of options for children's programming. So we didn't include that in the poll. We can only put four decades in there. Mm -hmm. So again, we have a lot to cover. So let's move on to the sixties. The That's bulk 60s. of our stuff is going to be eighties and nineties, but let's get sixties. Yeah. Everybody knows this, even if you weren't kids in the sixties. So this actually came out in 1959, but I included it in the 60s because that's when its heyday was. You know, it ran until 64, I believe. So I was never quite a uh, big fan of Rocky and Bullwinkle. But uh, the other day I was thinking about how both of the villains were communist and how awesome that is. <laughs> like, <laughs> think about it, like, that should be a requirement for all children's cartoons. Like, all villains should be communists. Decepticons. <laughs> Transformers should be communist. The Misfits and Jim and the Holograms should be communist. The Beagle Boys and DuckTales should be communist. All every single one should be a communist. Yeah, make it reflective. How the kids going to learn? Reflective of real life. Yes. Now what they do is they make the communists the heroes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're doing now. But yes, Rocky and Bullwinkle was a very popular and still popular. Hence why so many people still know who these characters are. Yeah. 
We've got a couple fans in the chat. Wow. Yeah. Uh, also, Pirate Tomsky just gifted 10 D program memberships. Thank you, Pirate Tomsky. Yeah. And so did GJJ. They're in a competition now. 20 <laughs> D program membership. Thank you <laughs> so much. 20, 20, 20. Go and put that 30. 30. 20. Grab those up if you're in the chat. Grab up a membership. Thanks to these two guys. Thank you guys. Okay, what else do you have in the 60s? Uh, do you want to briefly play a little bit of Alvin? Yeah, this so, is another one. So we've talked about this before, but I think in general, um, kids used to be more familiar with programming from previous decades. Like we grew up, we were aware of popular programming. It still had an influence on culture and on pop culture. When we grew up in the 80s, we knew of a lot of the the shows from the 60s and 70s and uh, i don't think that's i don't think that's the same anymore i don't know if a lot of young kids are familiar with the the shows that we grew up on i think some of them are discovering them and sort of having this nostalgia for a time they did not live through some of them are but a lot of kids are not familiar with thing things from the past like we used to be it's, it's things are too fragmented these days because like when we were kids we didn't have a whole lot of options for entertainment. You know, we had broadcast and cable and stuff. And so a lot of times I was looking for cartoons to watch at night, but this was before like 24 seven cartoon channels. And so I would end up having to watch Nick at night. And so they had old episodes of green acres and uh, my three sons and bewitched. And so I would watch that, but if I had the option, like kids they to do today, of just streaming cartoons and doing, you know, stuff on the internet, then I probably wouldn't be familiar with a lot of those old shows because I just wouldn't go out of my way to look these, look them up. And mm -hmm. that's one of the sad things I think that's been lost with uh, the decline of Saturday morning cartoons because it really was our shared experience as kids. Like it, it was sporting events, but it's because. Today, as an adult, I can watch football on Saturday mornings, and if you know some crazy touchdown happens, college football or something, I could text all my friends, go, "Whoa, did you just see that?" But like back in the day when we were kids, we'd be watching these cartoons, and then on the Monday morning at school, we'd go to a friend to like, "Oh, did you see what Screech did on Saved by the Bell?" Yeah, <laughs> like that was our water cooler talk, and so there was a real uh, almost bonding because of that shared experience some of our friends had watching the same stuff we were. Yes. Um, here, let me, let me add this back. There are people in the chat also echoing this. Um, here's one. Snorum, hello, says that's so true. I watched mostly in the 70s, but I knew all about Bullwinkle and Alvin before the 80s reboot and other IPs. Yeah, and that's another thing too. A lot of these old cartoons are kept alive because they did reboots in the 80s and 90s. You had the new Scooby-Doo Adventures, Scooby Kids, I think, whatever was it called? Mm -hmm. uh, you had Alvin Chipmunk's 80s. That's the one I'm familiar with because I never watched the 60s one. Um, but you had a bunch of other ones where they just took these old cartoons. Like, hell, even Disney Afternoon, you know, they took a bunch of old classic Disney cartoons or characters like Scrooge McDuck and made new shows out of it. And that's how a lot of us are familiar with those old characters. Okay, let's play a little bit of the 60s version of the Alvin Show. It's, it's the Alvin Show, the Alvin Show, the positive economy of the Alvin Show. So classy. Show. There's gates of bill, and one is more. Here's the boy who giggles, known as Theodore. Now you see on camera three. The brother known as Simon on the family tree. And here's the star of the show, Alvin. Alvin. <laughs> so, yeah, it goes on. But... What? But yeah, this I was just saying it goes on. But <laughs> But this this show, they took a lot of songs from the Chickmunk albums that came out in late fifties, early sixties, and basically incorporated them to the cartoon. So they went through like three albums in this cartoon, just the music from those albums. How popular was this one? Uh, this is very popular. This again, this is one of the ones that was on prime time originally, and then went to Saturday morning. Uh, Pirate Tomsky for five pounds says. My Saved by the Bell 
wasn't, hey, let's put some guy's head down a toilet. It was like, hey, let's put this guy's head down a toilet. I saw it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always thought college or uh, high school was going to be like. I thought like I was going to get shoved into lockers and get swirlies. That's what you <laughs> thought? Yeah. Did that ever happen to you? No. But I did get addicted to caffeine pills. I, I learned nothing from the I'm so excited episode. You're a liar. I'm so excited. I don't believe that. No, I did. <laughs> did you take it because of that episode? I took it, yes. Because <laughs> I was like, <laughs> stupid Jesse, I'll show her. It I'm had the opposite, to these. the opposite of the intended uh, mm -hmm. uh, impact. So this is this is the one that something in the chat already mentioned as their favorite show, uh, mm. the original Johnny Quest. Yes. I, I I think here in the in these sixties, you're starting to see the precursors to what made the eighties cartoon Saturday morning cartoons great. Like this is a more familiar style to us. And this was Hanna Barbera, and Hanna Barbera dominated the sixties in terms of Saturday morning cartoons. Them in filmation, but. Um, Particularly, I think it was Hanna Barbera that really dominated. I mean, this what is it, an exciting show. Go ahead. Oh, I, I, I was never like a huge fan of Johnny Quest, but I do like looking back on it. I like that it's just a bunch of dudes fighting crime and going on adventures together. It's Johnny Quest, his dad, his bodyguard, and their tiger, and it's great. It's it's a positive masculinity. Yeah. Would you say? Yeah. See, the fifties, sixties are great. You get communist villains bunch of dudes hanging out it's great music is some of the best says orbot's commander diverse cartoons says davina <laughs> <laughs> oh and adam is it adam that noticed uh, indigenous representation at the beginning yeah yeah, <laughs> then, yeah 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 uh plus he said that the guy looks like mike pence <laughs> he does. <laughs> so we should do a voiceover of Mike Pence with him. That would be hilarious. Randy Wallen is here. Hey, Randy, thanks for hanging out with us on a fun Wednesday. For five dollars, he says uh, the '60s. You got Popeye, George of the Jungle, Tennessee Tuxedo, Flintstones, The Jetsons, and Johnny Quest. Mm -hmm. You know, I should have put the 60s on the poll instead of the 2000s, now that I think about it. Do it again. <laughs> yeah, we should put the 60s on there, because nobody's going to vote for the 2000s. Look, there's 1% one, yeah. 1 of people so far have said the 2000s had the best was the best decade for cartoons. Mm -hmm. We're currently at 29% uh, for the 70s, 45% for the 80s, 25% for the 90s, and 1% for the 2000s. I need more 90s. Come on, 90s. Uh, I think 60s would beat the 2000s for sure. Thank you, Randy. Yeah. Okay, you've also got uh, one that I don't think he mentioned on here. Space Which Ghost. One? Space Ghost. Space Ghost. Yes. Which I've never actually watched the original Space Ghost. I just know Space Ghost Coast to Coast when they rebooted it. Uh, Cartoon Network rebooted in the 90s, but made it a uh, talk show parody. And so uh, Space Ghost is a superhero in space. And because of Space Ghost and Birdman, who, which was created by the same guy, uh, we start to see what would eventually lead to the downfall of Saturday morning cartoons in part. Uh, cartoons like this, because they were very action-oriented and violent, got the attention of various parent, parent groups. There was one group called uh, Action for Children's Television, which started in 1968. They objected to the violence. Uh, they specifically objected to the uh, advertising towards children because a lot of these shows, particularly as you'll see in the 70s, started to become um, shows that were essentially long 
toy commercials. Mm -hmm. And so they lobbied these advertisers and producers of these uh, shows to make these shows less violent. They actually wanted to abandon all, uh, or they wanted to ban all uh, advertisements in these shows. They went to the FCC, tried to get the FCC to do that, but that wasn't very popular. <laughs> and so they compromised on some things and they uh, put some restrictions on Saturday morning cartoons. There were a lot of networks that self-enforced uh, some of these regulations without the FCC having to come down on them. And so that's why you started to get a little bit more softer cartoons in the 70s with, you know, Scooby-Doo, and which we'll talk about in just a bit. But uh, a lot of other ones that, you know, were less offensive to parents groups. This is, to that point, this is an article from the Saturday Evening Post from 2021, The Rise and Fall of Saturday Morning Cartoons. Uh, for almost four decades, watching Saturday morning cartoons was a beloved ritual for millions of American kids. So why were they so controversial? This was by Charles Moss. And he he talks about this, how uh, in the six, starting in the 60s, but all the way through the 70s, the 70s, especially the 70s and 80s, a lot of these cartoons were um, there was a boom of the Saturday morning cartoons and the audience was huge because they were doing tie-ins with merchandisers. And that's why you're going to talk about some of we're going to talk about some of our favorite toys from this time because it went hand in hand. And they were they started they were creating kids cartoons based on toys and. Um, and so they were also marketing to kids because they knew kids were watching these shows the, in the serial commercial, everything in, you know, during this program was directed towards children. And so I just wanted to read this part of this article, unless you wanted to read more parents. No. However, I, I just wanted to briefly mention that uh, yeah. one of the things they lobbied uh, against or they found out they commissioned some studies and found out that kids couldn't differentiate between the shows and the commercials. Yes. And so they were very upset about that. And that's one of the reasons why you got those commercial breaks. Like I remember in the 90s, ABC had the after these messages will be right back. Those things to, you know, show kids, hey, we're going on break. <laughs> what you're about to see is a commercial. Yes. This is basically what you were saying is that they had concerns about the violence, the stereotypes, the commercialism. And like you said, they found that kids could not tell the difference between what was the show and what was the advertisement, which is kind of funny to me because today in 2024, we have parents and government officials and doctors saying that children can are, are capable of determining if they are okay sterilizing themselves and cutting their body parts off, but they, uh, they can't tell the difference between a TV show and a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, they had a better understanding of what kids were like back then. And they were well, worried. They said that on yeah. average, they were finding that uh, kids were watching up to three hours of television a day, which was, mm -hmm. they were worried about that. Think about how much time kids spend in front of some kind of screen today. Yeah. And like I, 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 on one hand, I do get you know the concern. Like I understand people don't like the idea of kids being you know marketed to you know being a demographic that advertisers are going after. But at the same time, like <laughs> cats out of the bag. Like there's no way you could put that genie back in a bottle. I mean, now they tried putting these regulations, which ended up to killing Saturday morning cartoons. And in addition to technology, but uh, it ended up not having the effect that they wanted to because. You know, the internet and so many other sources of advertising towards kids. And so it's like, I, I, I get it, but, you know, it, it didn't, didn't work. And, and one of the things to that point about uh, kids not being able to differentiate between the shows and the commercials, one of the reasons why they kids were having trouble doing that is because a lot of these serial companies use cartoons as their mascots. And so you think about all those, you know, major um Serial brands from eighties and nineties and all that—they they're all cartoon characters. Tricks Rabbit, Tony the Tiger. You know they had the uh, what those three chefs for Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Count Chocula goes on and on. Yeah, they did use they used cartoons to sell the product. I loved Count Chocula and Boo Berry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> <all> those, <laughs> that's why I wanted to eat the cereal. <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> 
Go ahead. I, I, when I was a kid and I eat Frosted Flakes, I would literally take a cup of sugar, pour it on my Frosted Flakes, put the milk no. in. After I was done eating the Frosted Flakes, I would then scoop up the milky sugar at the bottom of the bowl and eat all of it. I should be dead, Carrie. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Uh, Randy, we got yours. Thank you. Uh, Matthew Hammond for four ninety nine. Thank you, Matthew. He says, we have Steven Spielberg uh, for getting the D WB back into animation with Tiny Toon Adventures. Tiny Toons is great, which led to Batman, the animated series. The intro was their pitch. Warner Brothers had a lot of great cartoons in the 90s. And that's one of the reasons why Fox kids suffered when WB came around and created the WB stations, they pulled off most of their WB produced cartoons and Fox didn't really have a whole lot left and it suffered because of it. Should we uh, watch a little bit more of space ghost or let's move on to the let's 70s. Go to 70s. Yeah. Let's get, let's get into it. Okay. We're getting into our favorite bits. Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting that. This first one, this is Scooby-Doo. I don't think I have to introduce Scooby-Doo at all because everybody knows who Scooby-Doo is, which I was never a fan of Scooby-Doo. I always found that premise boring. Bunch of hippies with a talking dog solving. I crime. was a fan. Maybe this was more of a girl thing because there were dogs in it, you know? <laughs> 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 like, and... Now, somebody said in the chat, and I can't find it because it's scrolling by pretty fast, but I saw somebody said this was back before Velma was a lesbian, yeah. which is true. They, they've but, completely ruined, they've injected gender studies and, you know, this whole social justice woke uh, propaganda into the reboot, of course, and ruined what was a children's show by putting all these adult sexual themes in it. Um Oh, it's crazy how there's been tons of Scooby-Doo shows since the original came out in the 60s. And we had the latest one, Velma, which is a sad way to... I don't think he's ending. I don't think they'll continue to do more Scooby-Doo stuff. But still, that's such an awful way to end a legacy. Yeah, to completely destroy it. I think they actually enjoy, they get off on destroying people's childhood favorites. And some of them do. Hmm. Anything they view as traditional. They say this. If you read queer theory, if you read some of the theory, social justice theory, they, they talk about wanting to destroy everything that is traditional because they view it as inherently oppressive. If it's, you know, if it, if, if it is mainstream, if it is considered normal, if it's enjoyed by the majority, you must get rid of it. <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to watch anyway, so. Okay, I've got another one here for you. Let me see, which one is this one? Oh, uh, so this is the Super Friends. So, you know, it's the name, the Super Friends, instead of the Justice League, because this has Superman, the Wonder Woman, Batman, and some stupid kids and a talking dog rip off the Scooby-Doo. <laughs> they put the talking dog in there to get me. <laughs> it worked, it didn't it? <laughs> but uh, this was also created in response to uh, all the parents groups complaining about violence in cartoons and so with this show they emphasize teamwork and solving problems without using violence that's why they're super friends they work together the power of friendship can overcome evil it's a positive message yeah in the great hall of the Justice League, there are assembled the world's four greatest heroes, created from the cosmic legends of the universe. Superman. Wonder Woman. Batman. They put those characters Aquaman. in there. It, it doesn't fit at all. 
friend, those two <laughs> junior super friends, Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog. Is, is there anybody nostalgic for these characters? No, but this is how when you were a kid, you could see yourself as part of it. Because you're not a superhero. I don't want I don't want that. No, but the, that thing that pissed me off. Like when they put Robin in there. Like, I don't want to be Robin. Nobody wants to be Robin. I want to be Batman. <laughs> Injustice to right that which is wrong and to serve all mankind. So you were not a fan? Not much. No. The, the, the 70, and plus, like from an animation standpoint, I wasn't a huge fan because a lot of the animation is very cheap and they're rushing to get all these shows out. And so they cut a lot of corners and uh, there wasn't a great deal of motion to a lot of these characters. And th then story wise, too, and you'll see that a little bit in the 80s where they didn't take some of these stories as seriously as maybe they could have. Because, you know, growing up in the 90s, I grew up with Batman the Animated Series, which we'll talk about. But mm -hmm. I believe that to be the greatest children's cartoon of all time. And just that's something that'd be enjoyed by kids and adults alike and has aged incredibly well. And so <laughs> that's, you know, rightfully or wrongfully, that's kind of my standard for uh, children's cartoons, unfortunately, these days. This next one that you've included is another one that's it's not animated, but it was children's programming. Do you want to set this one up? Uh, so this uh, has a name that I don't know how they got away with, HR Puff and Stuff. <laughs> which the uh, Sid and Marty Croft, uh, they designed puppets. And so they decided to uh, develop uh, one of their ideas to a show about a little boy who goes to an island with some uh, weird puppets. It's very low budget and uh, really weird. I, I, I seriously think uh, it was designed for people who are high. They both claim that they had no idea, like uh, any connotations with, you know, marijuana, with HR pop stuff. It's like, no, it wasn't about smoking weed or anything. I'm like, bull crap. But yeah, it's it's such a weird show. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe I don't believe that. It's sort of like the Disney animators that purposefully put adult uh, little like Easter eggs mm -hmm. in some of the Disney movies. They they knew. I, in fact, if you do a web search for HR Puff and stuff, and you know Google will auto fill auto fill search uh, popular searches, and a lot of it has to do with drugs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd almost put a, uh, a uh, in a funny section when at the end of this episode, we'll play some funny videos. But one of the funny videos I ended up not putting in there was a uh, skit from Mr. Show. If you remember that show with Bob uh, yeah. Odenkirk, David yeah. Cross. And uh, they did one on this show where they made it a uh, show that had overt references to drugs. <laughs> so instead of a talking flute, there was a talking bong. <laughs> and like of it's like super high kind of, funny. of course it's just weird okay look look when you get into some of the characters this is just weird look at it it's uh, it kind of creeps me out quite frankly. it is creepy it is i don't i did not i mean th this is the kind of thing that would give me nightmares i did not <laughs> This reminds me of, <laughs> did you see recently that guy in um, Europe who, I think it's uh, Scotland, who made a Willy Wonka event? And it was just like literally some stuff he bought from Party City and just like put up in the, an empty building and like charged yes. people like $80 a ticket to get in there. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> it does. I just, yeah. Yeah, let's stop. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, I mean, Land of the Lost is kind of similar, right? Do we need to cover that? This is kind of uh, like... I mean, you don't know, play. I, we can just briefly talk about it. That's also a Sid and Marty Croft show. That one actually, even though I haven't watched a lot of episodes, I, I watched a lot of the reboot in the 90s, but um, that one actually had a lot of um, good science fiction writers. A couple of them wrote for Star Trek. Uh, David Gerald. Uh, Gerald. Uh, wrote, uh, I believe DC Fontana also who wrote for the original Star Trek, which they also wrote, both of them wrote for Star Trek, the animated series, which I didn't put a, a clip in here, but uh, that Star Trek show from the 70s, the animated show is really well written. It's almost like a continuation of the original Star Trek series. Yeah, I just, I just think maybe it's just visually, it just, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's just. Dated it's just another and, weird and one, and it's not animated, so. 
but very similar thing about people who cross over to some fantasy world and have to deal with magical creatures. It's a bit of claymation there. <laughs> I can't move. I can only move. <laughs> oh, there he goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, that. Oh, we got one more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Play this one. Yeah. Uh, now we're getting into. Okay, back into you know, this is this is what I think people think of when they think of Saturday morning cartoons in the seventies. Mm -hmm. Do you think? I think so. I think it's part of it. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, it's that guy. Now, did you watch this one? No, I didn't. This was for my time. You're a little bit younger than me. I, I watched this one. I liked this one. Um, and maybe it was in, I think it was probably reruns or something that I saw it on, but but I watched this. Oh, wait, it ran until 85. So, mm -hmm. no, I probably watched it probably when it reruns. was airing. Or when is it airing? Yeah. Yeah, I'm old enough. <laughs> I swear, every time I see Bill Cosby, I just, I, I cannot think of what, everything that transpired in the last few years. This one was so popular. I mean, this one ran for 13 years. Yeah. From 72 to 85. And this one had a lot of uh, social messaging and it did. morals. They taught kids. And it had a lot of what they call diversity, which is just <laughs> seeing black people on screen. They call that diversity. Had a lot of that. Uh, they want to, yeah. you know, pretend like there's never been women or black people on TV before or in cartoons, or and that's just not true. But Children. I also want to know how they got away drawing these black characters with such large lips. Like, I know it's black people got large lips, but come on, man. Some of these lips are like really <laughs> large. You would not see these type of large lips on black characters today. There's no way. They wouldn't. They would say it's stereotypical today because they're cartoon characters. It's kind of like South Park, you know, they're accentuating certain things about them. <laughs> Look at the teeth on that. Kid. <laughs> There's a the crack it. Something before it's done. So let's get ready, okay? Hey, hey, hey. The part of the box. Can you briefly show um, that that third clip? Just a little bit of it. I just want to give example of some of the uh, social messaging that was included on this program. Mm -hmm. This was a weird, but kind of funny. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh my gosh. He said Latino instead of Latinx. Is that the problem? How insensitive. What about the non binary Latinxes? Yeah, yeah. See, he is racist. That's not too cool. Maybe you'll like this better. <laughs> I like that he said black. So he could have said he could have said you know, something, something else. Yeah. <laughs> He's very nice, politically correct. Race. He's a politically people of color go home. <laughs> African Americans, get away from me. <laughs> Plus, look at the uniform he's wearing. Really, in the U.S.? Okay. <laughs> Look, Tubby, run along before you get hurt. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Look at what he's wearing. He's wearing, it's one of, it's the XX, meaning he's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> he's a turf. This is a turf design. <laughs> That's why he's so angry. Huh? 
the famous artist Bertie Rose sells T-shirts and hats with the XX on it. To say, like <laughs> women, women are here. I got to send this to her. And in fact, this looks like her. I'm going to send it to her. <laughs> <laughs> And that cured us racism. I mean, they were addressing social issues. They were, like you said, and this is in the seventies. Yeah. And and yet they want to recreate history. They want to lie to young people today and tell them, no one's ever addressed this. You live in this upside. You live in this, uh, you know, patriarchal white supremacist culture and. We have to inject social justice into all of your programming, even your cartoons and even beloved cartoons from previous decades. We have to do this because it's never been addressed before. And you've <laughs> never seen people of color in your screens before. And there's never been strong female characters before. And it's a lie. Young people, it's a lie. <laughs> it's also funny in that uh, clip, the laugh track. Did you notice that? What about the laugh track? They had a laugh track. Like there are a lot of cartoons from the seventies that had laugh tracks, especially since a lot of them were based on shows. Like I didn't put clips in there, but there are a lot of shows, uh, cartoons based on existing shows in the seventies. Like Laverne and Shirley had a cartoon, and Happy Days had a cartoon. It's like what? My kid wants to watch Laverne and Shirley cartoon. <laughs> I mean, I would watch a Golden Girls cartoon. Of course you would. <laughs> <laughs> not made today it would suck i'm saying if they had made one back then i would watch it mm -hmm. yep. uh well, randy for two dollars randy wallen hello thank you for the super chat he says 1970s don't forget schoolhouse rock we should mm -hmm. do that because one of the things we kind of skipped over in that article because we're trying to fit a lot of stuff in tonight is that Back when they were trying to, the, the lobbying groups who were concerned about children's entertainment and the commercialization in, in children's cartoons, um, they ended up striking a deal with some of the uh, serial companies and the toy companies and the, and the uh, animation companies where they would try and counterbalance what they said were the negative effects of these cartoons by doing more programming like Schoolhouse Rock. Um, and Schoolhouse Rock was, I mean, very. Did you watch it? No. I mean, I, I oh. remember them playing reruns in the 90s, but I never really cared much for it. We watched it. This was a big part of, I mean, we watched it at school also. Um, here, can I just put up a quick clip of one? Mm-hmm. Did you learn? Did it teach you? Do you feel like it was a good educational program? Yes. Um, well, I was going to put up Conjunction Junction, but instead, let's put up I'm Just a Bill, because that's one of the most popular ones. And that's where you were learning stuff. And I think, uh, you know, imagine if they, the people making kids entertainment today, instead of being motivated by, if they're going to be motivated by teaching something right instead of just entertaining if they're going to be motivated by imparting something in addition to the entertainment what if they were still first of all promoting universal values like friendship justice truth goodness all of these things and then also educating instead of instead of indoctrinating with this belief system that says the best way to look at the world is as this power struggle for between identity groups and and that's what they're doing now but what if they were teaching kids you know stuff like this make sure you pause it a little bit just in case okay copyright so in washington well i wonder who that sad little scrap of paper is i'm just a bill yes i'm only a bill and I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's a long, long Ready for the insurrection. <laughs> you would totally do that if they did this cartoon today. 
thing. <laughs> I'm gonna overturn the results of the election. <laughs> <laughs> they would totally they would do a dig at anyone on the they would figure out how to do a dig at anyone on the right you know <laughs> up a dull city it's a long long wait while i'm sitting in committee but i know i'll be a law someday at least i hope and pray that i will but today i am still just a bill Gee, Bill, you certainly have a lot of patience. And it would also, it would also, if it were truthful today, it would be like, and I'm getting, they're getting ready to add a lot of pork to me, you know, like add and all the stuff they add <laughs> and try to get some money to Israel. <laughs> it's time to fund another war. Well, I got this far. When I started, I wasn't even a bill; I was just an idea. Some folks back home decided they wanted a law passed, so they called their local <laughs> congressman, and he said, you're right, there ought to be a law. And he sat down and wrote me out and introduced me to Congress, and I became a bill. And I'll remain a bill until they decide to make me a law. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I got as far as Capitol Hill. Well, now I'm stuck in committee, and I'll sit here and wait. While a few key congressmen discuss oh. a debate whether they Surprise. should let me be also also if it were today it, they would have stuff in here where the congressmen are like if you don't pass this bill people are gonna die <laughs> people will die what was that um that comedy sketch by remy people will die <laughs> and pray that they will but today I am still just a bill listen to those congressmen arguing is all that discussion and debate about you yeah look at some of the comments <laughs> Ken Lipson hello Ken he says we were <laughs> so naive about uh, uh, back then we were we were, I was so trusting mm-hmm of the government look at uh two sisters in some yarn stop filing, <laughs> filing bills we don't need <laughs> uh chase in texas at, well at least back then they made an attempt to teach kids about politics yes if this was realistic when that little boy put his ear to the keyhole to listen in he would have heard a bunch of politicians go so uh what time does your flight get in on epstein's island yes that... <laughs> sorry oh the things that Bill would see today. <laughs> Who's that Biden? That Biden, a uh, congressional aide of the Democratic congressional aide who was filming himself having sex in on the Senate floor. Did you all read of them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we only know about one, but come on. Yeah, yeah, that's the one that got caught. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Real quick before we move on, eighty. So just say, I guess one of the reasons why uh, shows like that one didn't quite appeal to me is because. As a kid, I didn't want to be lectured to because I spent all day at school mm. finger painting and I didn't want to come home to listen to Danny Tanner tell DJ, give her some moral lesson about what she learned today or Carl lecture Steve Urkel. I just wanted to watch something funny. And so I, I just never really, I, I was never really into these type of shows that put the the messaging the heavy-handed messaging if they did it in a more subtle way sure but when it's heavy-handed it just kind of turned me off as a kid well it was part of our i mean i went to a a pretty i would have to say I, I mean first of all i'm from south carolina at the time and maybe still now at the time we were ranked like i think number 50 in the nation in terms of the quality of our public schools <laughs> and we were like the last we were the worst and a lot of the teachers would just put on television and they would put on this kind of programming and at least we were learning something if the teacher's not going to teach they would put on something like schoolhouse rocks or the electric company did you ever watch the electric company this uh -uh. is it that's really... the one morgan freeman was on right i think so uh they would put on yeah reruns of that and reading rainbow things like that that was better than some there was one teacher this oh my goodness he was showing kids really sexually inappropriate st he would put on movies like flowers in the attic that guy and he was he was always hung over the football coach guy <laughs> um and he would just sit there 
with bloodshot eyes with his sunglasses on and put on an adult movie for kids. So <laughs> we were lucky to get schoolhouse robs. <laughs> I love having teachers like that. They just didn't care. So they were just like, we're just going to watch a movie again. No, and he did like, not. Right. He was like the assistant football coach at my, in my little town. Mm. I still remember that. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it that that was, that was what was happening. Yeah. Quality education. Um, I'm just a bell singer was Jack Sheldon. Oh yeah. Randy Wallen for $5. Thank you for the super chat, Randy. He also noted that he said schools rock Jack Sheldon voiced and sang great LA trumpet player and singer. He led Merv Griffin's band and was his sidekick. So they had, they had some good talent on that show. Yeah. Great voice. Great voice. Are we getting to eighties now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, we'll we'll set it up. <clears throat> so, what led to the explosion of action oriented cartoons was a couple of things in the eighties. One was deregulation by Reagan's administration, which is funny because there are a lot of people who love Saturday morning cartoons from the eighties but hate Ronald Reagan. And I'm like, well, you have his administration to thank for deregulating uh, broadcast television, and so they allowed the cartoons essentially become uh, what they turned into be was 22 long, 22 minute long advertisements for toys. And so that deregulation paired with uh, the rise of the syndication market and syndication for those who may not know is when producers of various shows will sell broadcasting rights to individual stations. And so it will be either first run syndication, meaning it's never been shown before or reruns. And so since a lot of independent stations arose in the 1970s, particularly because of government regulation that forbid um, networks programming at certain hours and some other regulations that created a bunch of independent stations around the United States, um, these independent stations needed uh, programming to show. And so a lot of these animated shows in the 80s uh, would approach these uh, networks and sell them uh, these shows, but sometimes because it got so competitive in the mid eighties, they would give these shows away for free to these, uh, networks or these independent networks and in exchange for the right to put their own advertisements, whatever advertisements they wanted, they could sell the advertisement blocks during these shows to whoever they wanted. And a lot of times it was toy companies funding this, but, uh, what really got things started off in the eighties is, uh, he-Man. Let's start with He-Man. Okay. So He-Man. Real real quick, just because I saw this in the chat, now that you've set that up, I just want to show here. I just want to show this very quickly because of this super chat from Ken Lipson for $5. My favorite was the Hanna-Barbera Olympics. I always hoped it was going to be on that weekend. <laughs> Uh, did you watch this ever? I never even heard of it. So this is where they would take different Hanna Barbera characters, the first and they would have them play sports against each other. So they would bring on like Scooby Doo, and they would basically the Flintstones, and they would have an Olympics with all the different characters. It's kind of cool. Did the talking dogs all win? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's go back to He Man. Okay. So He Man. So He Man uh, started off as a toy line. So initially, the makers of Conan Barbarian movie, the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the first one, they approached. Uh, I think it was has was no, it was Mattel, and they were going to make some toys for Conan Barbarian. But they hold on, wait, wait, pause it. You got to hear the music. The music's okay. Um, but yeah, they were going to make a Conan Barbarian toy line, but Mattel didn't like that the movie's going to be rated R. So uh, Mattel just developed their own uh, character, which um, um, the makers of Conan Barbarian uh, movie thought they had ripped off when they had made He-Man. So they actually sued Mattel, which Mattel won. But wow. they apparently Mattel Mattel says they had been working on the character before uh, Conan Barbarian people approached them. And so Mattel did a lot of research, found out that boys love fantasy and barbarians. And so they decided to create this character who's from uh, planet Turnia, and he has got a magical sword that turns him into He-Man, who's got giant muscles and fights uh, Skeletor. And so 
they ended up making these big muscle toys, which stood out. At the time, we take it for granted. Like, we think, like, toys were always, like, huge muscles and stuff, but there wasn't really a lot until, like, He-Man came around and uh, had the steroid-looking <laughs> toys. And so the toys came out first along with, uh, I, think, I think it was a Marvel comic. Uh, that got huge and uh, I think it was, like, 82. And then in 83, they did the show and they sold it uh, to syndication market. Originally, they, they approached the networks to show it on Saturday morning, but the, none of the networks wanted it. And so they approached independent stations and arranged for it to be shown on afternoons, uh, weekday afternoons. And it was a huge hit. And because one of the reasons why syndication markets these after school um, uh Blocks, cartoon blocks were um, so popular is because the FCC regulations, there weren't a lot of regulations that regulated independent stations. And so they could get away with a lot more violent content <laughs> and other things. But despite that, the makers of He-Man and G.I. Joe, which we'll talk about later, uh, try to incorporate some some moral lessons in there. G.I. Joe would do the, uh, the PSA, the, the often parody PSA at the end of the episode telling kids not to smoke drugs <laughs> here are some of the yeah, toys like, yeah we played with these okay my brother had a castle gray skull and snake mountain and we had a bunch of these i remember beast man uh man of war uh we had that guy down there in the bottom left i forget what he's called sucker <laughs> mouth <laughs> He had a ton of these and my sister and brother and I play with that. I mean, it wasn't, you know, he, we, we, we had one brother, one, one boy in the family. So it wasn't like he had brothers. We, we would play with these all the time. And, uh, and then I th look at this, this is on eBay right now for 80, $85. They're go, I mean, the eighties ones go for a, a little bit now. And, and my, my sister unfortunately um sold all my brother's he-man for i think like a nickel a piece or something without him knowing <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty upsetting Ouch. family fa <laughs> family <laughs> controversy <laughs> just like, -Man okay tears your family apart yeah he-man okay <laughs> but yeah let's play this theme this is one of the greatest cartoon themes ever And the masters of the universe! I am Adam, Prince of Eternia and defender of the secrets of Castle Grayskull. This is Cringer, my fearless friend. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and said, By the power of Grayskull! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did you watch Turn that this? tiger from a coward <laughs> into a bloodthirsty animal? That's like my dog. See, this is uh this is my dog Tiger when he sees a cat. <laughs> and then this is my dog Tiger when he uh when a mailman comes to the door. <laughs> 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 That's when he's transformed. I did you watch this? I watched we watch this all the time. This is one of the ones that you know every Saturday morning my brother and sister and I watch He Man. A little bit before my time, but I, I saw reruns of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is aging, aging us. You can tell how old we are. <laughs> Not before my time. Yeah, She Ra too. We loved She Ra. Yeah, yeah. What I didn't like, we also had the She Ra toys, and they were a little bit smaller than the He Man toys, which bothered me okay Ranger became the mighty battle cat and i became he-man the most powerful man in the universe only three others share this secret our friends the sorceress man of arms and orca together we defend castle gray skull from the evil forces of skeletor <laughs> Also a communist. <laughs> Skeletor. <Yes. laughs> 
Okay, yeah. that's one of the best. Yeah. Right? One yeah, of the she, best. Man. This she is why huge. people are voting for the 80s in the poll. Yeah. It's because of shows like this. And yeah. oh, wow. Somebody says, no, I'm here for the 90s stuff. Well, so is Mr. Hell Chris. Hell yeah. Oh, we're going to get to that. <laughs> Kevin Anderson, all this stuff is after my time. <laughs> you can still enjoy uh, bungalow logic gen x had the greatest childhoods in all of human history no denying no <laughs> arguing that science is settled <laughs> now he-man is another ip that they've ruined something they've taken from the past brought back and destroyed uh just to make note of that of what's been happening <laughs> Okay, you've got another classic here from the 80s. G.I. Joe. So G.I. Joe, uh, about government forces versus forces of evil. And I, I love, one of the things I loved about G.I. Joe is how unapologetic American it is. Like, it's very pro-American. Like, <laughs> they're real American heroes. Like, you wouldn't see that in today's cartoons. Like the diversity would be championed instead of American. Oh, no would, celebration of American exceptionalism. If they did a military cartoon today, which first of all, that's a big if. I don't think they, but if they did, it would all be trans women military members. Do you know what I mean? Like it would be like some of the marketing that they're doing for the army right now, which is trying to appeal to woke trying to appeal to the, this ideology about gender identity and yeah, it, it wouldn't be the same, <laughs> but yeah, I play this. This is a great theme too. Joe! We'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe, Joe against Cobra the enemy. Fighting to save the day, he never gives up, he's always there, fighting for freedom over land and air. G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is the code name yeah. for America's daring, highly trained special mission. Now, did you play yeah, this yeah. one? What? Did you watch this one? Sorry. I watched it. <laughs> uh, in reruns, I saw a bit of it. We watched this one also. Also, again, my brother had all the toys. We played with it. Not as much as He-Man, but we did play with G.I. Joe. We did play with G.I. Joe and Barbies together, and we didn't have the old G.I. We had the little tiny G.I. Joes, and the Barbies towered over them. <laughs> so we would make the Barbies like aliens from another planet. <laughs> well, the original G.I. Joes from the 60s were basically kin. From <laughs> yes, they Barbie. were. And so like when the 80s came around, uh, Hasbro wanted to revitalize their G.I. Joe line. And so they decided to make them smaller, which meant that they could make play sets and it was cheaper to make two. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, G.I. Joe was one of the enduring cartoons from that era and still has a large following despite them making poor movies and cartoons. Okay, we've got another classic here. Oh, wait, before you go, uh, can you show that article real quick that Which, on the G.I. Joe? Um, let's see. I just want to show for pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So this, I just want to give an example of some of the crazy play sets that existed for G.I. Joe. Like, I, I, this toy we're about to show, I've never seen it in person. I've only seen pictures of it. It's, it, I just can't fathom how it ever actually existed. This first one? Yeah. Look at that. Wow. It's huge. It's like a bed. The kids could like lay on there and sleep on it. <laughs> who <laughs> it had this? Bed. We didn't have this. I mean, imagine whoever had them must have been the coolest kid on the block. Easily. Some some kids, either parents with money or parents without money, but who saved forever because they wanted to get their kids like the nicest, most expensive toy. I can't even. Yeah, I never saw this. Which that is. I, I really want to know how much it cost back then. Like now, of course, it could be expensive, but it must have been pretty expensive too back then. I would imagine. Of course, inflation wasn't what it is now. But listen to this: um, named after Commander General Flag, GI Joe USS Flag aircraft carrier 
reproduces the design of Nibbets carriers, which established the maritime dominance of U.S. Naval Force in the 1980s. It is without a doubt a game changer in toy history. In fact, with unparalleled size, it is probably one of the most spectacular play sets ever seen, measuring nearly seven and a half feet in length by two and a half feet in width. Jeez. Highly sought after collectible today. Now, we, I wonder how much these go for on eBay, probably. <laughs> just, yeah. Can't that's, believe it. <laughs> that's incredible. You're just, no, no. <laughs> you're like, I want one. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay, now I know what to try and get you. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody has one, they want to donate. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's add this one to the stage. Yeah. Now we're getting into another classic 80s. Watched it all the time. Did you watch this one? Uh, reruns again. Yeah, not originally. This one came out in, I think, 84. So this was actually based on a Japanese toys. Uh, I forget the guy's name, but he was in Japan, found these toys of these robots that can transform. And he got the idea to develop that into kids cartoon. And so when they came out with this, um, they simultaneously came out with a comic and toys at the same time. So with G.I. Joe and He-Man, they came out with the toys and comics first. And then that led to a series, but with Transformers. Oh, hold on for a second. We just got... I think we just got kicked off YouTube. Oh, no. Oh, no. Are we gone? Oh, it says we're back. Okay. We're back. Oh, right. no. Let's try and not play. I think if we show clips, but we don't play as much of the music, we'll be, co we'll be good. Okay. We oh, lost. Ah, oh, we lost about half of the viewers too. Sorry, yeah. guys. You, we got hit. Oh no, man down. Okay, we're back. We're back. <laughs> oh, we knew. We knew this would happen. We're showing too much goodness. So we're gonna try, guys, and so we don't get kicked off YouTube again. This video is definitely gonna get a copyright strike <laughs> uh, after the fact. So what we'll do right now is we'll show some of these classics without as much of the music. And hopefully that will allow us to show some of the animation from the eighties. We're just in the best part too, the eighties. Okay. I interrupted you. I'm going to hit play while you continue talking about transformers. Transformers more than meets the eye. Eighties man suggests that you sing the music, Mr. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I need to look up to some of these lyrics. Ooh. But yes, uh, Transformers was the uh, one of the perfect way to sell toys because <laughs> you had so many different Transformers that they could easily get rid of, which they did get rid of some of them in Transformers the movie, uh, the infamous Transformers the movie, uh, where they killed off Optimus Prime and a bunch of other Transformers so they could introduce more toys. But uh, oh, so cynical. Of, well, a bunch yeah, of kids like, were apparently crying in the movie theater when Optimus Prime died, and there was a huge backlash. And so they brought him back because people were so upset. Well, here's something we can watch and we can play the volume on. This is a news report. Can I oh, put yes. this up? Yeah, put that up. Okay. I You guys know, if you're regular viewers, how much I love... Um, I love the news reports that Mystery Chris finds. They sort of take you back in time. So this is from 1984? Yes. Should should we set this up or just hit play? Oh, yeah. It's just about the toy craze of Transformers and GoBots, which is essentially the same thing as Transformers. Except nobody knows what Go, GoBots yeah. are. <laughs> no GoBots <laughs> movies. Sorry. And Cap Move over, Cabbage Patch. There's a new kid on the block. A robot which can be transformed into other objects. It's the new craze sweeping the country, one which has caught the imagination of kids on the coast as well. The more than one toy, you can take it and say a transformer can be a car and you convert it into a plane or a pistol or, or some other kind of a toy. And it's, uh, it's very interesting. It's, it's got a lot of moving parts and it's uh, an educational type toy. Stores yeah. handling the GoBots, Converter Bots, and Transformers say they have had to reorder the product several times this Christmas season due to their popularity. All devices come assembled. This one, for instance, is known as the Transformer. What starts out as a robot can be broken down by folding its arms and legs. The result product is a tape recorder. Voila. 
The toys are recommended for kids five years of age and older. Putting them together may look complicated, but actually they're not. Just ask an expert. It's real simple when you get the hang of it. When, you, when you've had it a long time, it's, it gets real easy to put together. And, accent. And, you, and when you've got I the love hang of accent. it, you can do it real fast. These fellows predict this new breed of toy will replace the Cabbage Patch Kid as the number one favorite among their peers. The ultimate compliment came from eight-year-old John Lowry, who let it be known that hardy young men are not the only ones who like to play with the toy. Yeah. Girls even like to play with them. My cousins like to play with them. <laughs> true. <laughs> it's true. I enjoy playing with these as well. My brother had several of these also, and we play. my sister and I play with them. Uh, what did one of the things I think a lot of kids don't realize today was that there were a lot of toys in the 80s that were made out of metal. I remember these uh, Transformers toys. A lot of them, not all, but a lot of them were metal. But now today, everything is just plastic. It feels a lot more cheaper because it is cheaper. Yes, it is. Plus, they have, uh, there was an aversion that developed towards using metal in anything in, in children's play sets and and everything. Uh, I've got I've got something to put on the the screen in case you're worried about us losing the stream again. We are simulcasting on Rumble, and I just put the link in the chat. Um, here's the link, and there are some folks over there, including Matt. Thank you, Matt G Hammond, who gave us a Rumble rant is what they call him over there. Rumble rant for two dollars. He says, tell people to come to Rumble. Outside of Batman, the animated series, the real Ghostbusters and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were the best. The real Ghostbusters, which we'll talk about, that was a probably, I think that was the best cartoon of the 80s. That's such a well written show. And that had a lot of big science fiction writers on it. J. Michael Straczynski, who created Babylon 5, was a writer on that. They had some Star Trek writers on that. Just a well written show. And, and I figured that was going to be one of your favorites. Mm hmm. Okay, so you hear it, you hear it here, folks. If you want to go over to Rumble, it's definitely won't they won't take it down there. Um, but if you want to write it out with us here, feel free. Okay, what about this McDonald's? Oh, that, I think I was just a you know have to, but but I think it was a commercial too because I, I I was thinking about like one of the reasons why so many of us who grew up in eighties nineties have such strong emotional attachments to a lot of these properties is that. There was a lot of hype for them, and a lot of that hype was, it was marketing, of course, but uh, a lot of it was tie-ins, product tie-ins, like McDonald's and Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, they, they all used to do tie-ins with various shows and movies, and I think that's a huge reason as to why we associate that experience of, you know, excitement with these properties, and that's something that's kind of missing today, because you don't see that that amount of hype at least not in the same way because I, I think things are just so fragmented that it, it's harder for shows and movies to kind of dominate the national consciousness or the, the zeitgeist in the way they used to and i think that's one of the reasons why a lot of these properties even when they bring them back don't catch on with younger people as much because you know, there's just too not many the same environment you know? yeah the environment's different media is different and you know there's too many places for you would have to do I mean, a lot of people, as you know, they're advertising via TikTok today. They're paying TikTok kids and adults and with channels to do stuff. And it's not the same as like, oh, we have a deal with McDonald's for toys. I mean, who cares? But if you've got a <laughs> TikToker, you know, <laughs> I do want to see this. I love old commercials as much as I love old news. So just part of it. I think we could do the volume on this probably, right? Yeah, I think so. Can you tell me what it means to have a choice? Choice means I can pick the one I want. Like at McDonald's. McDonald's? Yeah. In McDonald's Happy Meal, you can get a Transformers figure in like Brawn and Gear. Ah! Or a My Little Pony Trump, like Blossom and Butterscotch. Ooh. What we're trying to say is that you can choose a Transformers figure in or a My Little Pony Trump in every Happy Meal. Perfect. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's weird because I do feel nostalgia for stuff like this, but at the same time, looking back on it, it's sort of saying, you know, buy your kids this really unhealthy garbage <laughs> for them to eat 
because and we're going to tantalize it we, we're going to put a toy in there so the kid begs for it as if the food the the crappy food weren't already addictive enough <laughs> do you know what I mean? it's like well to be fair the meat back then was only 20 percent made out of plastic okay good or in med only two percent yeah <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and Pinkava is a good comment. Look at that nice old lady teacher. Yeah, today she would have blue hair. It would be a man <laughs> uh, masquerading as a woman with a nose ring. And yeah. Yeah, where are those kids' parents? Wait a minute. I don't like this. <laughs> oh, the nostalgia. Okay. Okay, this is this is another, I think, from my childhood anyway, this was another classic. I don't know about the guys if they watch this as much. Uh, did you watch this one? I had never heard of it up until a few years ago, and I actually like it. I'm a grown ass man saying I and love you like Jim it? and holograms, but yeah. <laughs> I like the theme. Cool. The theme is really cool. I wish I could. I probably shouldn't take the chance of playing it, but uh, the theme's great. Well, let's play like two quick seconds of it. Okay. Okay, this is Jim and the Holograms, which, I mean, all of us girls in the 80s watched this. They It, it was kind of sort of like you were saying how um, He-Man was possibly inspired by Conan the Barbarian toy that, and, and show that someone else is marketing. Well, this, I think, was clearly inspired by Barbie and the Rockers. And they even had a Barbie and the Rockers movie, and they were trying to turn it into a cartoon, but it didn't take off for some reason, or they, they scrapped it, maybe... Was it maybe, was it because of Jim and the Holograms? I don't know. But uh, people at the time, kids, we would get them confused. I often confuse Jim and the Holograms for Barbie and the Rockers. Yeah, there was a rivalry between the two. And the thing is, Barbie had a lot more options of things she could dress up as. But with Jim, it was just a rock star. <laughs> That's all I'm going to risk. Fashion, glitter, fashion, and fame. Oh, you sing it. Jim is amazing. <laughs> you know it. You're I don't watching, care. You're watching this right now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's a good intro. Yeah, it you know? is. It's so great. There's those misfits, those bitches. There you go. This is 80s, man. That's what he wanted. He wanted you to sing. See, they're 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 communists. They're trying to stop her, stop her capitalist endeavors. So the the show, like the premise of the show, is really weird because it's a woman who's in charge of a music company, but she has an alter ego named Jim, in which she creates by having a hologram that's projected over her, and. There are rival bands that are trying to upstage her constantly, and that's the plot of the show. It's so weird, even though I like it. It's like what? What? What is it that you enjoy about it? Like I, I I like the nostalgia. Even though I don't remember this show, and it was still a little bit before my time, it still kind of makes me feel nostalgic. Especially mm -hmm. the intro. There's something about the intros of that He Man Transformers. Um, the uh, Zelda cartoon that was on Mario in the 80s. Oh, there's yeah. something about those intros. I don't know how to describe them, but they, they there's something about that just makes you feel very nostalgic. Like yes. It, it, it just kind of brings you back to, to the 80s. It was just a feel, a know, feel good yeah. time. You, you're not, a, you might, you're about to get marketed to for sure. They're about to try to sell you stuff, but they're not about to sell you an evil ideology. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, meant to sell dolls. That's what they're selling. Yeah. And Jim did a lot. Jim was very popular. Uh, Alan Scott says, I barely remember this show, but Mystery Chris is evidently an expert. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> yeah, there were tons of commercials for the products of Jim also, says uh, 80s man. Yeah. Okay. This next one, people have been asking for. Thunder, thunder, thunder now, yeah, you're gonna have to sing it. <laughs> our video is gonna get taken thunder down again. It, I'm not playing the music. Thunder, thunder cats. Here we go. Thundercats. So this, so this is kind of like He Man, but with cat people. Which, when I was a kid, I used to think his name was Lionel, not Lion-O. I like Lionel yeah. better. So, guilty admission. So you watched this one? 
And uh, reruns of it, yeah. I know what it is, and I may have seen an episode here or there, but I didn't. Re- we didn't really watch this one. We watched T Man. We watched Transformers and GI Joe and Jim, but not this. Yeah, well, like I said, it's similar to to He Man. You know, they're fleeing uh, the destruction of their planet, and the main character has a magical sword uh, that gives them power, and the bad guys want the sword, and so it's. But I, I don't know. I, I, Thundercats, despite not really having very many cartoons or movies produced lately, it almost seems like it might be maybe more popular Transformers. I don't know. Because I, I, when I look a lot of videos online and I see more views and engagement for videos and articles having to do with Thundercats and Transformers. So it seems to me like there's still a large market of people who would still buy into like some well-done tra- Thundercats movie if they were to make one yeah. which they've been trying to make one for years you know so they'll eventually make one but it never occurred to me until you said it and then watching it there without the music just looking at the visuals how much how similar it looks to He-Man mm-hmm. with the sword and the cast of you know the good well, guys and the cast of evil characters and the thing about a lot of these cartoons that came out in the mid 80s like the ones we just talked about all those ones those benefit greatly from the system and were huge popular and sold a lot of toys but the thing is when toy companies realized how much money there was to be made they rushed to make a bunch of new cartoons that would sell toys and many times they developed the toy lines at the same time as the cartoons and there ended up being a glut of cartoons there was way too many in the late 80s and none of them could really rise above very few i should say could rise above uh, one another and that's part of, of reason why things started to decline because when you had all this malinvestment there was essentially a boom and then a bust uh, and a lot of these toy companies couldn't recoup uh, their investment because they they invested wrongly like brave star which mm. uh, we can we don't have to play a clip from brave star but uh, that was one. Uh, it was a cowboy um, in space, Native American cowboy uh, on a planet called New Texas. <laughs> and he had the like, powers where he could conjure spirits and he'd fight bad guys and stuff. And the toy company that made them were expecting this to be huge. They had a huge toy line and they had the cartoons. They made 65 episodes because that's typically how much you need for syndication. And so they put all that up front thinking it was going to be a huge hit. And it, it wasn't. It was a huge bust and they lost money. And it's just a forgotten about 80s cartoon. Yeah. I didn't even know about that one. I've got a couple people pointing this out, Mr. Chris, in the chat. So I just wanted to acknowledge it that yes, a lot of these technically that we're covering now were during they were during the heyday of animation for kids, but they were after school cartoons. A lot of these. Yeah, like, correct. Yeah, we're 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 talking about afternoon stuff too. So I decided to rope that in, and a lot of these shows, even though they premiered on weekday afternoons, they would start showing them on uh, weekends. So the real Ghostbusters, which we'll talk about in a moment, um, that was the case with them. They started showing it syndication, got popular, and then start showing on a I think ABC at least in the market I was in as a kid or Saturday mornings. What about the 60s, said Scott. Hey, Scott, we did cover very briefly, because we had a lot to cover tonight. We did cover very briefly the 50s and 60s. We showed some highlights from those two decades at the beginning. So that was before we got taken off the air for showing too too much awesome 80s. Have too much fun. <laughs> and now we're back. Okay. This next one is... I don't know what this says about my age and what... because. I watched He-Man, Jim, all those. I did not watch Thundercats, but I did watch this one all the time. We loved this one. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I loved it. That's why I had a bunch of pet turtles as a kid. But uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles started off as a joke. It started off as a comic book. The two comic book creators were playing around, and they were making fun of Daredevil and uh, the X-Men. So they created some mutant turtles that had these blindfolds essentially like daredevil and they liked it and like hey let's actually make a comic into this and so they made a comic into it and uh that was very popular and then um a licensing agent uh, found it approached them and uh, hooked them up with i think playmates made the toys for uh, ninja turtles and then they came out with this series and the original comic is a lot darker than the cartoon the cartoon was toned down and made more, you know, fun and goofy. Lighthearted. 
Yeah, which the creators didn't really like. And the first Ninja Turtles movie, the one from 1990, that's probably closer to the comic book than this cartoon was because there's actually is a comic book. I have this comic uh, where they took a great deal of that story from the first Ninja Turtles movie. And then they, the second one, which I still love Ninja Turtles part two, but they toned that one down and made the goofy. Like there's, you, there's a kind of a pattern you see with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. The same thing with Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters was, while the original Ghostbusters was a, I say still family friendly for the most part, but there was some sexual innuendo in there that kind of went over my head as a kid and some other things. And then when the real Ghostbusters uh, happened in 86, uh, the second movie ended up coming up, you know, a few years later in 89. And then they toned that down. They gave Slimer a bigger part because Slimer was popular with the kids because of the cartoon. And again, I love Ghostbusters too, but they, they toned it down a little bit, made it a little bit more childlike. I just wanted to point out that um, you see on the, the screen here, they have a couple of bad guys who are black. Um, <laughs> and that's Be no black. longer allowed, even though he's one of many, right? But, but Barry doesn't look that black. He's got a Mohawk. Huh? Mohawk. I guess that's kind of like uh, Mr. T. Maybe. What about this guy? T. Oh, he's from uh, Fat Albert. Yeah, look at this. Fat Albert in the gang. Yeah. Another bad guy. Oh, that's a faux pot. That's a fox fox. <laughs> a fox fox today. <laughs> got some ooze on his teeth. That's why. They... The white wow, bad getting... guys are fine, but you know. They're getting uglier and uglier. Okay. <clears throat> but good what old else? Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles had a huge toy line. I always joke that. Uh, every character in Ninja Turtles, including like a background character, like a janitor, had a toy. Because that's what it felt yes. like. Like every single character had a toy. It was crazy. And they were doing uh, probably gangbusters on the arcade games as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was yeah. one of the, there was there was one sort of popular burger joint in my tiny town. It was um, not a chain. It was a. It's still there. It's a 1950s style burger joint, and they had a our the the ten Ninja Turtles arcade game in the back, and we would just go there as kids and just quarter after quarter into that game. You know, that was hard. It was a hard game. Still angers me that I couldn't beat that game. <laughs> We've got another news report here. This is about the popularity of the Ninja Turtles. This is from 1990. And I'm going to get up just for one second because I have to let Tiger out into the other room. <laughs> the turtles are rat into superheroes. The mutant teenage turtles use martial arts to fight the bad guys. We don't know why they're teenagers. If it looks cool, <laughs> <laughs> you recognize $350 million a year. <laughs> this you slick man. It, but Alan <laughs> Eric Johansson is rushing down the aisle at Target because he's learned an important lesson. you got to get to the store as soon as it opens to get a shot at the turtle of your dreams. Damn or right one of the nearly too. dozen bad guys. And a costume set. No, not that one. I guess this one's not as cool. And for high rollers, the sewer playset. Oh, I had that. Do you want a cello? Or do you want the vacuum? Or... I just got the vacuum. It's entertainment. <laughs> it's well it's well. Good. They don't provide turtle toys at childcare centers like Children's World, but talk to the kids and you... Hey, can everyone hear me? If you can, Carrie's power just went out, but she just texted me. It is back. So she will be here in a moment. Uh, but I'm going to look at the chat, see what y'all discussing. Oh, it's down on Rumble too, you said, Kevin? Hmm. Yeah, it must be, I guess, on her end. 
Hey, you can hear me. Yay. I was so scared. I thought I was alone. Uh, yes. Let's see. What are y'all talking about? I wish I could see that poll. I don't know if Kerry put that poll back up. My vote is for the 90s. Uh, like I said, with Batman, the animated series, the best cartoon ever. But I think with the 90s, I think they kind of softened things up a little bit, which not necessarily always good. But I, I think maybe because they have to move away from a lot of the action for, for the cartoons in the 80s. Oh, hey, there you are. Hey. You're back. Sorry, out of power out. Tonight's the night of issues. I know. Deep Everybody's, Therese. Everyone's trying to ruin our fun. Uh, thank you guys for sticking around. I'm sorry about that. My power went out and came back. Uh, we're here. We were I in the middle remember of Gargoyles. Tweaker. Yeah, Tar Gargoyles is a good show. Sorry, that's a 90s one. Sorry. I don't remember that one. Yeah. Did you... Were you about halfway through this? Um, it stopped playing. I forget Are where, where it was. After the kid. Yeah, I think around, around up there, I think. Bring in a new $15 million movie. An impressive achievement for comic book characters who started in black and white with doses of bloodletting and profanity for an adolescent audience. Marketers saw the potential, toned the turtles down for a younger crowd. So they sell cookies and cereal, draw kids into Burger King. It worries some parents. There's a lot of violence, which doesn't seem to connect very often. There's glasses. <laughs> Car windshields. I love them. I w bring them back. Really? Like, yes. You look like an old librarian. Okay. <laughs> I love them. And with much of a plot, there's a good deal of sexism. The lead female oh, character um, often gets into. Come on! This is the precursor to woke. Did you hear what she said? And, and that's why uh, April is this uh, fat lesbian in the in new, the new girls movie. Yes. Oh, a good deal of sexism. Why? Because she's attractive. <laughs> really? <laughs> the trouble and has to be rescued. Although that may be because she's a TV reporter. Another criticism is that the cartoon show can be seen as one big advertisement for the toys. Some members oh, yeah. of Congress propose outlawing that kind of children's TV. That wouldn't go over too well at the Sweetman household, where the toys sharpen debating skills. They live in the Yeah. No. Yeah, but yeah. they go in the but, um, No, they were taken from the city zoo. And they teach a sense of humor. They say, like, really funny things. Yeah, like, Michelangelo says, tell them how funny they did. Aww. He tried to get it fun <laughs> by bringing a container of turtle ooze. I think it's I kind of it. disgusting, isn't it? I know, really disgusting. It's the same Obviously, thing as the Ghostbusters. Too... No, it's just pink. Yeah, they just changed the, the color. Just to go back to that criticism again about April, it's, you know, I take back what I said about this woman's glasses. This was, <laughs> these are... <laughs> yeah, take that. <laughs> these are the original woke glasses before they got like little square, chunky black ones, you know. Uh, it allows her to see oppression, Karen. It allows her to see sexism that's not there. What? Because <laughs> April's attractive and because he said because April gets into situations where she needs to be rescued. But yes, because she's not a superhero. They are. You know, like th th this is basically a complaint that none of the Ninja Turtles are female turtles. That's, I mean, that's essentially what this is. None of those which superheroes is, are girls. <laughs> which is why they created a female turtle in the mid 90s. They had a live action series that lasted mm -hmm. like five episodes. And they had a female turtle that had uh, boobs on her shell, or oh, at least like gosh. these curved parts of her shell that look like boobs. Turtles like, don't what, have why? boobs. <laughs> I guess the mutagen gave her boobs. I don't know. No, it's just wrong. But the, the the thing I loved about playing Ninja Turtles with my friends as a kid is that they couldn't make me be the black one like Ghostbusters, because like every time I play Ghostbusters, I'd be like, hey, guys, I'm Egon. They're like, yeah, yeah, that's nice, Winston. Go get our proton packs from the car. Like, All right. Why didn't you want to be Winston? Because Egon was the smart one. Like, I, yeah. I I, didn't hate nerds as a kid. I wanted to be the yeah. smart guy. Yeah. And so, But although, you, you know my theory on the Black Ninja Turtle. I mean, there is a Black Ninja Turtle. We Michelangelo? Know. No, no. Raphael? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's very angry he's he's cursing a lot <laughs> definitely black which was your favorite turtle uh leonardo, leonardo. Was the leader and he had swords 
Yeah. Because the other weapons are kind of lame. Who wants a bow? I don't want a bow. I want yeah. to cut things. Uh, Davina says Egon was obviously the best. Yeah, I think Leonardo was obvi- obviously the best also. Okay. And segue into Ghostbusters. Segue into Ghostbusters. You always had to be Winston. So the, there's a f- couple of funny things about Ghostbusters. So uh, there was a show in the 70s called Ghostbusters. It was a live action show about uh, a detective and a monkey, a giant talking ape, which was a guy in a suit because it was a live action show. And they would solve um, paranormal mysteries. It was basically a ripoff of Scooby-Doo. So when Harold Ramis and Dan Aykroyd and Columbia uh, decided to do Ghostbusters in 84, they had to get the rights for that name. And then Ghostbusters mm-hmm. came to be a kit. If they got the rights for that. And the company that made the original Ghostbusters from the 70s decided to cash in on it. So they made their own version, which is basically a cartoon version of the 70s show of the guy in the gorilla. And so when mm-hmm. Columbia decided to do the real Ghostbusters cartoon, they decided to put real in the title to as a slight to the other Ghostbusters yeah. <laughs> because they're fake Ghostbusters. Because the thing is, there were a lot of people who thought that the cartoon Ghostbusters, the one with the Talking Ape, was tied in with this Ghostbusters. They actually got complaints from parents who thought that they had turned Winston into an ape. They thought the talking ape was Winston. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that says more about them than anything else. But yeah, so that was funny. Um, and also, speaking of Winston, apparently uh, Ernie Hudson, who plays Winston in the movie, of course, he auditioned to be the voice of Winston. He was the only actor from the movie to audition for his character, that character in the show, he lost out to Arsenio Hall, who does the voice of Winston in the cartoon. Wow. Poor Ernie Hudson. He this loves is... being a Ghostbuster. He does. I think this man carries a Ghostbuster uniform in his trunk everywhere I go. I'm not even joking. I seriously think he does because I've seen him at so many conventions, even conventions that have nothing to do with Ghostbusters. Like I've been to Star Trek conventions. He's like there in this Ghostbuster suit. Like he wears it. I don't think they even tell him like, hey, could you wear this? He's like, nope, I already got it. (laughs) No need. (laughs) I got my own. This is the show you're talking about called Ghostbusters. Yeah. Who watched this? I have no, I, I I only found out about this a few years ago. Nobody talks about it. And yeah, there's an ape character and they, they tried to say this was Winston. See, they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're the racists. They're the ones who come up with crazy stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like that's, who would, who would think that? Oh, uh, Winston. <laughs> A's film yeah. says that's why they called it the real Ghostbusters. Yeah. I I never yeah. knew this story. Thank mm-hmm. you. Other interesting fact about Ghostbusters. So in the movie, uh, Peter Vakeman's played by Bill Murray, of course. But in the show, Lorenzo Music does the voice of Peter Vakeman. Lorenzo Music also did the voice of Garfield. But Bill Murray did the voice of Garfield in the movie. So it's just a weird kind of tie between both of those men. Between all of them. Okay, what's this next clip that you gave me for Ghostbusters? Uh, which one is it? Oh, I think that was just the the title of the if uh, the fake Ghostbusters. Let's call them. Oh, okay. Which I found. Yeah. Elsewhere. Okay. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Um, and then I guess oh, yeah, we still have a couple more for eighties, real quick. Just mention, um. I put in a Chippendale, I mentioned earlier about the Disney Afternoon. So Disney Afternoon was a syndicated block, two hours of Disney cartoons that they sold to independent stations. DuckTales was the most popular one on there, where they uh, took one of the old characters, Scrooge McDuck, and I think they created uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. But uh, they made him uh, his uh, nephews, I think. Even though we don't know who their parents are, it's not Donald Duck, he's their uncle. But um, that was one of the shows. Chippendale was another one, which I was never a huge fan of Chippendale, but I love the theme song of this, and that's why I put it in here, even though we can't play it. We can't play it. We'll get booted again. If you're just joining us, we got booted from YouTube once for music, for copyright 
and then uh and then also power outage so <laughs> yeah but chippendales was great uh, at least the theme uh there was also tailspin and then for a while they played gummy bears which started prior to the creation of disney afternoon which i think was in 86 or 87 and then uh goof troop was later and so that was the disney afternoon and then uh, Super Mario Brothers, which I'm bringing up next. So this was the first Super Mario Brothers show, which was a cartoon with live action parts mixed in uh, at the beginning and the end. Um, <laughs> the rest of the guy who plays Mario was a wrestler. Uh, the other guy, I think, is just an actor. But uh, it, was, it was a fun show. It, it had a great uh, opening <laughs> with this rap. Because, again, like we talked about in the uh, hip-hop episode, how there was a huge rush to cash in on rap in the 80s as it was yes. like, becoming more popular with like white audiences. They're like, oh, how we, how can we make uh, use this to make our product cool and hip? And, so and they, they did made, a rap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this glorious, glorious rap. Which the person who uh, made the song, who helped write it, uh, was, um, I forget the guy's name, but last name is Saban. And Saban, uh, if people remember from the 90s, uh, helped create a lot of shows like X-Men and Power Rangers and a bunch of other shows. But he started off as a music producer for cartoons. He wrote the cartoon themes for a number of cartoons, particularly for Deke, which... My friends always we always like calling it dick because that was funny and it's still <laughs> funny <laughs> but uh yeah that was super mario brothers and then they had legend of zelda like um, every j just quickly some people didn't know about this i watched this did you watch it the super really mario yeah brothers? yeah we watched it um but there are people in the chat right. uh bear knight says mario brothers cartoon lpj also i've never seen this wtf really? yeah yeah this was That's surprising we got it in my tiny town yeah uh we watched it. It was yeah. bad, you know, of the time in terms of superimposing real life action on top of animation. Mm -hmm. um, it looks very dated. It looks really cheap, <laughs> you know. But it's yeah. charming. It's still it's, charming. 80s men said, yeah, the show was huge. It was. Yeah. And they, of course, brought Mario back a couple other times without the live action segments. But I didn't enjoy this as much because I actually like the live action segments with the cartoons. And then every Friday, they would play a Legend of Zelda cartoon in place of the Mario cartoon. Which at the time, I didn't really wasn't into these Zelda cartoons. But now I love watching them because they're so cheesy. They, you have the infamous line, excuse me, princess. Say <laughs> to the princess. It's the most 90s thing you could say. <laughs> like, excuse me. me. So they only made 13 of these episodes. But he said it apparently 29 times. Out of 13 episodes. It was like his catchphrase. Yeah. Because all, all the characters in the 80s and 90s had to have catchphrases. By the way, Legend of Zelda is something else that's been being ruined in current day. Uh, one day I'm going to do an episode on this. But this is there is a huge trans, non-binary sort of claiming of Zelda, the legend of zelda they're what? trying to claim it and say that he was not link was non-binary and that legend of zelda is what cracked their egg have you heard that expression what no cracking your egg is when you realize you're trans and what? that's that's an expression they use and so a lot of them say the legend of zelda was their egg cracking moment where they what realized people always complaining about being dehumanized supposedly like isn't that kind of dehumanizing <laughs> cracking it like what no yeah. um, it's making sense there's also a huge yeah alan scott they claim everything was trans they do but there is a huge amount of i do want to do a show on this uh, uh, the link between the link ah <laughs> the link between link and uh uh autogonophiles like the 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 people who claim to be trans but who don't have gender dysphoria but who are fetishists and and then also enjoy making uh sexualized content using characters from the legend of zelda yes they're ruining they're ruining all they're ruining all of childhood <laughs> of <course. laughs> yeah nothing surprises me anymore i guess yeah 
But uh, you can skip uh, Silverhawks because we got to get to 90s. But Silverhawks is another cartoon, uh, which is kind of like what it sounds like. A bunch of people in Silverhawk suits in space. Um, this one, I just wanted to mention this one that you're highlighting right now real quick. Um, mm -hmm. I only found about this uh, recently. A friend told me about it. I have no recollection of it. But this is, might be the first multiverse. <laughs> like This is an anti-drug uh, special that came out, I think, in the late 80s. Uh, where's a crossover between a ton of uh, big cartoon characters at the time. Alf, which I think there was an animated Alf show. Um, the there Muppet was. Babies was in there. Um, Bugs Bunny, uh, Alvin and Chipmunks. I think Teddy Ruxpin was in there for some reason. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, this is an educational, like, anti-drug. Uh, you showed me this. Have we shown this before? Because you, I remember I you... Know. Look at who they have at the did. beginning. We we could put the volume on for this. This is just this is so 90s. This is 1990. You got the president HW. Not HW. HW. Yeah, yeah it's HW. HW. Cartoon All Stars to the Rescue is the powerful story of a teenager dealing with drug and alcohol abuse. And some of your favorite cartoon characters will help you understand how drugs and alcohol can ruin your life. So watch the program. Talk about it with your family. And make the right <laughs> so... <laughs> well, Make the, the right choice. <laughs> or this dog gets it. She's like... <laughs> If you do drugs, this dog gets you. She's strangling that dog. <laughs> Help. Help. Right decision. Stay away from drugs and <laughs> Oh, yes. Mute that. I mean, it's probably fine, but uh, YouTube, I just don't understand anymore yeah you yeah as you can see the smurfs are in here too they're all in it you're right this is a, the biggest this is the first multiverse i we did if we if if we didn't uh, tell us if you've been here if you're a longtime viewer of our our fun pop culture episodes have we shown parts of this before because if not that means you and i just watched it because <laughs> <off camera. laughs> i've seen this i've seen this with you <laughs> you got the smurfs you got alf hold on here's alf Garfield. Garfield. The Chipmunks. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Winnie the Pooh's there. Winnie the, the whole Pooh. gang's here. Everybody. Don't do drugs, kids. You got. Uh, I think the that was Slimer. Was that Slimer? Yeah. Slimer. I love stuff like this, though. It's even though, you know, they got a message don't do drugs. But it's, it's they bring in all the characters. Yeah. And I remember, I think it was it was over like smoking. I don't think it was like even like pot or anything. The Muppet, the Muppet like Babies. Cigarettes. Yeah. See, there's a bad guy. Kind of looks like the bad guy from Fern Gully. He's like, smoke another cigarette, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He's there saying over his shoulder, do drugs. Oh. And Bugs Bunny's like, don't do it. Eat a carrot. But this was just kind of the uh, beginning of the end because this came out in 1990, which coincided with the FCC making regulations. They passed the um, Children's Television Act, which required that all the stations air at least three hours of educational or informative programming. Uh, they limited the amount of time ads could run on uh, each show. They prohibited um, shows from having commercials selling toys or merchandise related to that show during wow. while it's on. Um, they had to make sure that they said the networks had to make sure there was a, a uh, clear differentiation between commercial and the actual show, which is why you had the bumpers. And uh, this basically was beginning of the decline of, of Saturday morning cartoons because it just wasn't profitable for a lot of these companies in addition to having the fox uh, 20th century fox uh, buy up a bunch of local independent stations and rebrand on fox that's where fox network came out and then you had of course in the mid 90s where paramount did the same with upn 
and then Warner Brothers with the WB. And so a lot of these independent stations, which have been working with various companies to make toys um, or shows that would sell these toys, uh, were no longer existed. And everything had to go through the network. And there was only a limited amount of uh, spaces for various types of programming. And so that, in addition with the rise of technology, with uh, VHS, DVD, with the internet, with cable, uh, cable wasn't subject to the same regulations as broadcast. And so Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, which we'll, we'll talk about Nickelodeon on another episode. Can't wait to talk about that. But uh, those shows would, would show cartoons all day long. Um, they off, obviously took away a lot of the audience from Saturday morning. and it's, But there's still, it went out with a bang still, I would say, at least in the mid early mid-90s. There were still some excellent cartoons despite the slow, gradual decline. I just wanted to, for a second, bring us back to modern day because of who's on screen right now. Do you see that character? David Hogg? <laughs> That's the wrong messaging. He would be in the like, take your guns away. Kids, kids go get your parents' guns. Throw them in the lake. That's what he would be doing. Gonzo, uh, your nose looks too much like a gun. You're gonna have to cut it off. Oh my gosh. We have, okay. We have the funniest chat, by the way. Look at this. Tigger warning. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked warning. his name. It's too close to thanks to Vina. And then also there were many people pointing out, uh, like Anne, think of a poor kid just needs to get off drugs and then he sees the smurfs and thinks he's tripping. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, that's some trip. Talking ducks. Yeah. <laughs> Must be high as a kite, people say. Um, no, I. Th that's Gonzo. So the Muppet Babies, which we haven't really touched on. The Muppet Babies was also big during this time. And uh, that's Gonzo. And we keep talking about kind of bringing it back to current day stuff that they've done to ruin childhood. They have made uh, Gonzo from the Muppet Babies trans or non-binary. Did you know this? I think we talked. Well, about I mean, it his nose does look kind of like a penis. So. Stop. But look at the CNN non-binary characters like Gonzarella are lighting up children's TV and encouraging self-acceptance. Is that what they're doing? Are they encouraging self-acceptance or are they pushing children into a dangerous trend of not knowing what reality is? Yeah. I'm pretty sure we covered this before, so I'm not going to read this article. We have too much to do, but there you go. Yeah, nothing shocks me. But um, sk skip over, yeah, Dark Green Duck. Skip over that. Dark Green Duck. Yeah, it was loosely tied to uh, DuckTales, which I like Duck Green Duck, uh, which was kind of like an old uh, 1930s serial shadow type character. But he's a duck. Fights crime, but that's fun. Um, but let's go to Batman, the animated series, which, as I said earlier, I think is hands down the best children's cartoon ever. It's just so well written. Even the visual style of it is... Just it's beautiful. It's inspired by the 1940s Max Fleischer Superman cartoons, which if people haven't seen those. You should. They're awesome. I'm sure they're probably on YouTube. But uh well, yeah. so we're we're moving into the 90s, which is your favorite decade for children's cartoons. We have too much to do. We've already gone over two hours, so we're skipping Darkwing Duck. We're gonna skip a few things. We're getting to your favorite. So this is this is your favorite of all time. Yes. This is our, yeah, that's him. Yeah, favorite. I've seen favorite. Yeah. Uh, cause this cartoon is just, uh, awesome. Feeling written. Uh, there was a lot of strength in, uh, with them because they could have easily made this more goofier. It could have made it more like the movie, but they actually deviated a bit with the design, the look of the characters, the vehicles, um, the storytelling was excellent. The music was t excellent. Shirley Walker did the music, which they, made some albums a few years ago releasing of all the music they they had on this um show and i have it it's great but yeah just an excellent excellent show holds up everyone everyone i know still watches the show i think it's on hbo max i only i had put that guitar version in it because i i knew that warner brothers would be um a stickler for 
playing uh, music to their shows and so i just put a awesome guitar version you know if you want to if you want to play a little bit or not it's your favorite show let's do it all right let's do it we'll so, play just a little bit this is a great trend on on youtube of a lot of people musicians who make covers to uh various songs or you know intros to tv shows and this guy did this. an awesome awesome intro for batman Anime series just guitar version of it i have to show this to anthony Maybe we could do a gem version. <laughs> yeah, I bet that exists. Gem in the holograms. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Yes. I love this. Yeah. It's great. Awesome. I'm afraid even with that, we'll get in trouble for making the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah. Oh, that yeah. Great. Rick Roscoe, hell yeah, it is. Ooh, people love it. Well, he put his Instagram handle up there. So you guys go follow him. Find him. Yeah, what's his name? Can you read his name out? So get some love. Yeah, here. and you can buy his, the, his version of the, the song on uh on iTunes, it says, here you go. Let's add it back. Um, his name is Neal Stenson. N-I-A-L-L Stenson. S-T-N-S-O-N. Neal. Neal or Niall Stenson. There it is. Very cool. What a cool trend. Okay, now yeah. I know a, a new rabbit hole I'm going down. Is... I'll do it. I've done it a lot. There's a lot of um, guitarists that do covers for Star Trek shows. So they'll take like <laughs> D Space Nine or Next Generation intro and do metal versions. It's awesome. What search terms do you use? Cover of TV oh, show? Yeah, guitar cover, metal cover, you know, yeah. Are you looking okay. at Golden Girls? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 How did you know? <laughs> uh, well, oh, I found a metal version of the Golden Girls theme song. I'm not listening. We don't have any time to spare. But I've got, got that queued up for later. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> okay. So what else? From that this was list? Batman. Uh, let's go to X Men. That's in the yeah. news recently because of uh, X Men '97, which is uh, it's okay so far. Some people love it. I'm like, uh, I would have preferred if they continued prior to the X Men, which was the pilot episode of X Men series that came out in the '80s. It was cheesy, but I still think the '90s version was better than what we would have gotten with the '80s one. But I would have liked to have seen that because there's been five seasons of this one, which I love. Don't get me wrong, I love this show to death, but I just kind of want to see something different. But yeah, this show is, uh, when you think about 90s cartoons, I think this is maybe even more than Batman for a lot of people. One that represents all of the 90s. It's just, and this theme is great, uh, which is all synthesizer. I always thought it was guitar, but it's not. <laughs> just go weird. But yeah, I had all these action figures. Uh, I was a huge X-Men fan growing up, yeah. comic books. Uh, something funny I read was that um, Jubilee, who is that character in the yellow trench coat, she is yep. Asian, which I didn't even know the character was supposed to be Asian. I yeah, think they were kind I of afraid that. to make it more her Asian features. But uh, apparently the actress who voiced her in the 90s series is white. And I read that when they made this new series, X-Men 97, she specifically requested that they get an Asian actress to voice Jubilee. So I was thinking, like, is she a true believer in that? Or is she just afraid of another Apu situation? Backlash. Where Twitter is going to attack her. It's like, oh, I can't believe she's voicing an Asian character. It's Asian face. Yeah, I think she's probably afraid of the backlash. And she wants to signal that she's woke. And she's such a true believer that she was willing to give up the, the role, probably. Mm -hmm. Animaniacs, uh, another great show. Uh, this show is written very well too because there are a lot of references to movies particularly adult movies there's stuff i didn't yeah. get and so i can go back and watch it and now get some of those references because as a kid i wasn't watching good fellows it was 
watch the goofy cartoons. I watched this one all we we watched this one after school. I mean, this was a I think this one also appealed to probably like X Men. So you older kids could also really enjoy this. Like you said, there were a lot of cultural references. Bill Clinton on a saxophone. I mean, come on, mm -hmm. they had the president. They had the president there. Pinky and the Brain. That was my favorite. The good fella, the good feathers. Yes, good feathers. Yeah. This was also created by Steven Spielberg, who did Tiny Toons, and they decided to do a new show. And they were looking for old cartoons from the vault that they could use, but they ended up creating cartoons that looked as if they were created in the 1930s, which I liked. That's a nice little yeah. Touch. I like the style. Yeah. Yeah. Animaniacs. Uh, let's go to the next one, which I, I, I admit I was crazy about. Uh, this what? <laughs> I was obsessed with it. No, you're definitely younger than me. It's this like it's not... one of those. It's like we listen to like the Germans from War Two when they describe like why they were so enthralled with the German dictator from World War Two, and they're like, we don't know, just something came over us. That's how I feel about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Like. I don't know why I was so crazy about this, but I was. I was this is with it. Uh, this is just as creepy to me as as HR <laughs> stuff. This is like why? HR puffin stuff creepy. <laughs> look it's at it. Creepy. Yes, look at this. It's all of it's just gross. It's grotesque. It's not. It's not good. Look. Ew. All it's of already. it. He looks like the Emperor from Star Wars. And this or isn't Darth a Vader cartoon. Is okay. No live action. <laughs> But it practically is a cartoon, <laughs> like of physics and everything. I mean, they they took a bunch of footage from Japanese show, which was it's a, it was a trend that was happening in the '80s and really got big in the '90s, which we'll talk about a couple of those shows. But they took some footage from uh, Super Sentai, which I believe the name of the show in Japan was, and then they recut it and put in these actors in the spots where you just see them without their costumes. And it was a craze. This was like Beatlemania, but for kids. Oh, okay. I'm just looking at the years that this ran. This is why, okay, this is where our age difference definitely comes into play, I think. And also our taste difference. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, not everything can be Golden Girls. Here. <laughs> Let me, when I was in college, the six-year-old that i babysat for as one of my college jobs he watched the power Rangers. okay <laughs> well to be fair the show was, was ran for like 20 damn years true true but uh so let's see it started in 93 yeah so i was in college starting in 97 you were how old were you uh i was you can give a roundabout age. you don't yeah. have to out yourself you were younger let's yes, just say yeah, you were younger yeah. okay uh, no, I, we need to do a new poll. Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. You just kind of dropped a little in my respect. I'm, I'm oh, totally kidding. Care, care, care. <laughs> no, come on now. I'm totally kidding. I, I really, I just, I, I don't, I don't get it at all. I guess you had to be there. I guess, I guess it had to be the right time. The right. It was age. ninjas fighting giant monsters. Like that's cool. It had giant robots in it. Like, I like all those elements. Yeah, it's goofy the way they put it all together. But those elements by themselves are awesome. So weird. Okay. You gave me a lot of links to Power Rangers. I mean, you watched a... Do you want to show any of these? Uh, you show one of those news reports. Uh, do you want to do one on the violence? Yeah, let's do the one on the violence. Was this a thing? People They were worried about the violence in it? Yeah, there were a lot of parents groups that were upset because it's very violent. I remember I had a friend who, after watching a show, like tried to kick me, and I just like slammed him on the ground. Like, what? Are you... Like a Power Ranger? You were? Yeah. He's like acting out Power Rangers. Like, boo! What are you doing? I think maybe I just because I saw it as like a kids thing. Yeah. Okay. Look at this mom and her son. So I lost an hour of work just to come here <laughs> and wait till nine thirty just to pick up the Saba sword that they wanted. You got it. <laughs> 
millions of kids watch the television show and get their parents to buy the toys. But critics point to the violence, and they say this is a bad message for children, no matter how the producers try to package it. If you're in the right, it's okay to use weapons. It's okay to use force. It's okay to hurt, to maim, to kill. And that's a pretty sad message to be giving children. At the end of every show, there's a public service announcement that says to kids, all right, this is real, and this is not. The kids may or may not hear those messages, but they are watching and they are buying. Stores are expected to sell a record $1 billion worth of power range. Wow. Yeah. This was huge. This is just after my time. That's all. Yeah. Well, you can you stop know what there. I, Nothing. What I remember around this time, because this is when I, I, when I was in college and getting in heavily into woke stuff. Uh, tell me if I get the, if I got this right. As someone who never watched it, we were criticizing it though, and I remember we were talking about how um, did they the Black Power Ranger was he a black guy? Yeah, he was black and he danced when he fought. Okay, and the Yellow Power Ranger wasn't she Asian? Yep. Okay, and the Pink Power Ranger was a girl. Mm -hmm. Okay, the so gay they, one was blue. Yeah, the game was blue. Okay, but. That was one of the criticisms. It was like, why do you have to make the Black Power Ranger black? Why do you have to make the Yellow Power Ranger Asian? Right, and uh, that was that was a that was the lens through which I was looking at this in college when this was a thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, L uh, LPJ in the chat asked if I like robot jokes. Uh, yes, I like the beginning and the end with the robots. The middle of the film was a little boring, but. Uh, Two robots fighting was fantastic. I just like robots. I think I'm Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. I really think so. Okay, this one also. This is after my time. I just viewed this as a kid's thing, you know. So yeah, uh, Pokemon. This this was uh yeah, getting towards the end of Saturday morning cartoons. So NBC stopped showing cartoons, I believe in ninety-two. They had Saved by the Bell and California Dreams for a while, but and then they had some other shows that had some moral instructions in it. But a lot of uh stations like started to scale back in cartoons and more educational content. Um this show, I think Pokemon got started in syndication, but then WB picked it up. And kind of started a or expanded on a trend of taking Japanese animated uh, cartoon shows and then redubbing them uh, for American audiences. And it got really huge Pokemon, Digimon, Yu Gi Oh! and a bunch of others. Um, and we still see it to this day the amount of imports from Japan coming over here that's super popular. This is kind of like when anime really started getting huge and started to become less stigmatized. Which I, I just, I, I never really watched uh, Pokemon or Digimon. I just didn't get it, but it was huge. Oh, you mute it, Gary. Oh, I said this is another one after my time on the screen now, Dragon Ball Z. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah, watch so this one? I didn't watch it. Uh, it it's just, it seemed like there was just wasn't interesting enough like i said i i like robots like the anime that i watched when i was younger had robots in it you know akira and uh ghost in the shell mm -hmm. macross plus i needed tech a high tech stuff but stuff with like monsters and it's like very over the top you know fighting and stuff it's just too much for me okay Personal favorites of yours from the nineties. Personal favorites, um, reboot, which uh, I don't know if a lot of people even saw this show, but it was a great show. Um, if you've ever seen uh, the show, if you remember it, well, maybe I guess you're about to play in the little bit of that intro. But if you see the characters in here, if they seem familiar, it's because the people who developed the show also did the Dire Straits Money for Nothing video. And if you remember in that video, they had to block people in there, which some of these characters are literally the same thing. Oh. <laughs> it was a cool show. It was a clever show about these beings that lived in essentially, they live in a computer. And so they have to fend off vi from viruses. And every time a uh, player who's playing a game loads a new game, 
it uh, lowers in over their city and they have to uh, play this game or if they lose that part of their city will be destroyed and so it was a clever show it was very smart there are a lot of references to like star trek which i picked up on as a kid but it, it was a good show and uh it just wasn't like super popular they actually brought it back a few years ago but they completely changed it where they it basically tried to make it into like the new jumanji movies where you had a bunch of live uh, action people who went into a game you know jumanji slash tron and it was terrible but yeah it was a great one i never heard of this one uh davina has i like to reboot it. it's a it's probably more niche a little bit, yeah. It, it, it ran for a couple seasons, and they brought it back on Toonami, which was Cartoon Network's cartoon afternoon block in the late 90s, I think, for a third season. It was great. This one, uh, I really want to play some of the, the music because you have to get some of the effect, but be careful. I mean, just... Let's so this is it. from Iron Man. So I've been a huge Iron Man fan ever since I was a kid. This is way before the Tony, uh, the uh, Robert Downey Jr. movies. I didn't know about this one. Yeah, I love this one. I've, I'm playing it very lightly yeah. in the background, and we're talking over it, so maybe that'll help. Do you think? <laughs> yeah, look how manly that is. So why awesome. did you, look, Why did you like this one? Because I love high tech stuff. I love Susie, I love Tony Stark, and I love this intro. This is second season intro, and they put in the guitar, the '90s guitar. This most manly thing you'll ever hear. Like if if you listen to this and and you know you don't get pregnant, then I don't know. Stop. What to say. So again, positive masculinity, or at least not being afraid to show masculinity. Yeah, yeah, and, and he may think he was smart. I always he loved was strong, it. Yeah, smart. It wasn't funny, though. That's a weird thing, because a lot of people who are like new to Iron Man and Tony Stark, they think because of Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal that Tony Stark was like a wisecracking guy. He's like, no, he's not. He's an alcoholic. He's very serious. But uh, I always thought that was something that differentiated him from um, Bruce Wayne. Uh, this is Big Guy and Rusty. And uh, just have to play a little bit. Of this It's clearly inspired by Astro Boy, the Japanese or two, but I loved it much better than the comic. I recently read the comic. I'd never read the comic. It was written by Frank Miller, who wrote Dark Knight Returns. The uh, comic's not so good, but this cartoon was great. Not a lot of people watched it. Got not a lot. Of, I, I'm noticing some of your favorites are not very yeah. well known. I didn't. Uh, another one I don't know about. But yeah, see, robots. See, you see a pattern, robots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Weird premise, but it was just well done. And these episodes are on YouTube. You can find them. You can watch this one on YouTube. Yeah. Anyway, you don't have to show any more of that. We can move on to Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot. That's what it's called. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The animation was great. Yeah. I think it was animated by the same people who did Men in Black animated show, which was good too. They're on the WB. I think Big Guy and Rusty was on Fox and WB. As the 90s went on in the early 2000s, a lot of these channels since the broadcast channels were being bought up by people who owned the cable channels. A lot of times they were taking uh, shows that were on cable and putting them on broadcast on Saturday morning. So uh, Disney, when they bought ABC, they started taking stuff from Disney XD, putting that on uh, ABC. Um, I think it was CBS was who, who was it Viacom, I believe, bought CBS. And so they start taking stuff from Nickelodeon, putting on there. I think it was was it NBC that that had a partnership with Discovery. They start taking stuff from Discovery Kids, so a lot of educational live action stuff. When they take some of these Disney shows, you know, in the case of ABC, like Lizzie McGuire and other ones, they would take stuff that was uh, episodes that were more morally instructive to kind of satisfy the um, oh no those requirements. Did we get you popped again? Get popped again? For what? Not Did not on Rumble. One? Hey, we're still going on Rumble. This is a good advertisement for Rumble. Oh, is it the Iron Man one? Uh, Probably. Dang it. Uh, man, it was that music. They still caught it. They, uh, they... Uh, I'm putting the Rumble link in the YouTube chat. So if you can't see us on YouTube, um, or if you if we're coming back, Kevin says that's why I'm watching on Rumble. RIP stream policy violation. I man, look. Oh. This should be fair use. We're not like showing you whole episodes or yes. anything. We're just showing tiny clips. YouTube, 
this is educational. We're adding context. We are critiquing, adding commentary. We're not showing the whole episode. We're not even showing half of that. We're not, we don't have time. We've already gone for two and a half hours yeah. and we've covered four decades already. We, we don't have time to show even a tenth of an episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, well, we might come back on YouTube. I'm not sure. We're, we keep uh, losing viewers, which is probably because uh, we're not back yet. So we'll just continue on Rumble. This is fine. All right. Um, speaking of, I've got out of the stuff that's left, we are at two and a half hours. What's most important to hit? Uh, you don't have to show stuff, but I, I put some stuff from 2000s um, where, in my opinion, the quality of shows just kind of went down. It wasn't a lot, but uh, Jackie Chan Adventures, which is a weird concept for a show, but a show that starred Jackie Chan as he solves uh, supernatural stuff and does you know martial arts. Um, yet Static Shock, which was a black superhero, original black superhero, imagine that, uh, that was based on a comic and they turned that into a cartoon. That was a very popular one. There's Jackie Chan. I'm just going to sure. show while you're telling me about each of these, but I'm going to show little bits of them in the background. So that's the Jackie Chan one. We don't have to show all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I interrupt. Which one were you on? Uh, I was on Static Shock. Okay. So yeah, you had Static Shock, um, and then you had. Or are you going? Are you pulling up the shot? Yeah, but you can just keep going. Yeah. So uh, this, you know, I'm not a fan. I didn't really watch the show, but it'd be nice if they like did this instead of you know taking white superheroes and turning them black, making stuff. So I'm, I'm all for it. You want to make original black characters? You know, I'm all for that. It is. Keep it's original doing. black characters. Yeah, I never heard of this, but. It's better than it's better than just race swapping. Yeah, and he and this show dealt with a lot of um, social issues. He, you know, had more instruction in it, so kind of counted. Because uh, the big thing I forgot to mention in '96, when the Telecommunications Act passed, they got more tough on the regulations because they weren't really enforcing it all that much, and so you really saw a steep decline uh, in the late '90s with cartoons and Saturday morning specifically. Uh, this is Digimon, Digital Monster, which was similar to Pokemon, but this was based on a toy. If you remember those, uh, what's the Tamagotchis, I think they were? You had that little um, oh, yeah. toy thing you raise egg. Well, the, it, there was toys, Digimon toys, which would do similar things where you raise a monster and you could f use this monster to fight, you, be like your avatar. And so they developed the cartoon. Uh, this one got big. Um, and so... This was a very popular. I didn't, didn't, didn't really watch it. Again, no robots. So also yeah. after a little after your time. Mm. And this is Yu-Gi-Oh. And Yu-Gi-Oh again didn't really watch this, but this one had to do with a card game that it was based on a card game, and in the show, uh, he plays a card game, and it's uh, not quite my thing. But again, another popular one. Uh, Davina asked, did anyone watch the Boondocks cartoon? I did. I think that was more for adults, wasn't it? Yeah, that was interesting in trend too with Cartoon Network. They started developing a lot of cartoons uh, specifically targeted for adults, Adult Swim. Uh, they used some old cartoons, characters like uh, Birdman. And they created Harvey Birdman, attorney law. Um, and they did that with some other characters. But yeah, it was interesting to kind of see that kind of shift that happened with one, the rise of anime and the rise of cartoons for adults, specifically on Cartoon Network at the same time. It was kind of odd shift that occurred in the 2000s. Okay, what's coming up next? Funny? Uh, yeah, let's get to, or do you want to present toys real quick? Or do you want to go funny? I know we were running a little late. But. Well, you, this is, this is the episode you've been very excited about for a long time. I'm also excited about it, but really like you, you tell me which toys did you want to talk about? Uh, let's talk about the, uh, oh, do you have my slides? Listen? I do. Oh, that's mm -hmm. right. Okay. 
<laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do this. Um, rem do you remember how? There we go. Okay, that's how we do it. Okay. Um, Is that, there we go, toys. Yeah, toys. <laughs> now, I remember you had a Pee Wee Herman doll, didn't you? I did, but that's not in this. this okay. show. I only put five toys or so. This should be no surprise. I mean, come on now. You had this? Yes, I had both of these. So uh, Star Trek toys. I had the Enterprise and a bunch of other ships because I love tech. And I had the, uh, the PlayStation or the uh, playset of the bridge which I only had one Star Trek action figure. So I'd end up using like X-Men action figures. So I'd have like Cyclops as the captain of Wolverine <laughs> <laughs> who's navigating the ship. Yes. Yeah. Well, as a kid, use your imagination. I mean, we would mix the Barbies and the G.I. Joes and, you know. But but this this shows you just how popular Star Trek was at in the 90s when they made huge toy lines. When they made a bridge. Like who thought a bridge playset would sell? But it did because kids still watched it. But now they don't own that. So they just make goofy cartoons and kids still aren't watching Star Trek. So that's another story. Don't get me started. But anyway, yeah, that's Star Trek. You can go to the next one. Okay. Uh... No surprise here. Uh, these toys were very hard to come by. I remember uh, I was at Target with my mom one time and I think it was early in the morning. And I uh, went to the toy section. Nobody was in the toy section. I saw two uh, packages of the Megazord. Uh, it was like finding the Holy Grail. Like I was like, <laughs> holy crap. And so uh, I got that and I was uh, very happy as a child to have do something still, that most Do you still have any of these? I still have most of these toys. At your parents? Up somewhere. Yeah. I, should, I need to go through them and see if any of them are worth anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Ghostbusters, of course. The firehouse. Uh, yeah, the firehouse. I had oh. the proton pack. Do you remember that? Yes, I think my brother had this. I think. Yeah. Yes. And you had the uh, uh, little ghost catcher where you could step on it and it opens up the ecto yes. trap. How was... cool! The mm. one the, on the left there, you know, your own. Uh, yeah, the ghost catcher and all that. I mean, what a of course, you have to have that kind of toy. <laughs> Fantastic. And then Super Soakers. Of course, I don't know. Do you ever play Super Soakers, friends? Yeah, of course. Yeah. We used to have wars where we'd get water balloons. We'd use as grenades, and we'd all have our, our water guns, and we'd line up and just march towards each other. Such great times. Although I'm surprised in college I never used this for, like, beer. I think it was smart. Oh, uh, and then that is not the bomber. Like I loved him as a character as a kid, but now as a adult, I find him very annoying. <laughs> Even though I still love that show, Dinosaurs. Underrated show. Still hilarious. But I had this toy where you pull the string in his back and he's like, not the mama. I'm sure my parents love me. <laughs> this thing going. But yeah, that was the that's my toys, the main highlights. Okay. I'm going to show you some of the ones that I had and maybe still have. Okay, this one, I have this and still, and this is somewhere in my house here, but I couldn't find it, but I know it's in a box somewhere. Charmkins. Do you know what this is? I have no idea what that is. Look at this. It's going for $105. I got to find mine. I got the whole set too. <laughs> this was a little girl <laughs> thing. Clearly, it's this. Uh, this is what the the Charmkins live in this uh, windmill here, and all of the Charmkins can be worn as jewelry. And <laughs> you, and look, they have a uh, picture here. This is the back of the windmill, and it opens up, and they have all this little furniture and flower pots and stuff. And see that thing, the fence around the bottom. That's a headband. Mm. You can wear it as a headband. Oh. And all of the Charmkins, like the, the girl there and everything, can, they have uh, rings and necklaces that they can go on. See, you could even stick a Charmkin right there on the <laughs> headband. Uh, and, and this, the bird at the top, you twist it and then you make the windmill move. But you can also take the bird and the nest out and wear it as a ring. And the bird comes out of the nest. 
Look, you there it is. Play while you accessorize. You yeah. play and accessorize with your charm hands. <laughs> you can wear them. I have this still somewhere. Um, now this one, I don't know if I still have these. If I do, they're in my parent at my parents' oh, house. Oh yeah, somewhere. well you need to find them. Look at that price. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty dollars, and we. I had a lot of these. I had the, I had the horse and Rainbow Bright and uh, I don't know what peppermint patty. Some of their I forget all their names. I had a few of these and uh, yeah, they come with their own sprites. Those little sprites there. Um, th these are all girls things, right? <laughs> so and uh, now they will be deemed gender neutral toys, in, at least in California. Yeah, yes. Now, now these are boys toys. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's be real. <laughs> um, okay. Here's another one. Hold on. Uh, No, does it surprise me how Care Bears? Care Bears, although these don't, I don't, uh, I guess they are, in 1983 it says. They just don't look the same as mine. Um, I had Friendship Bear. He's uh, up there. I think he's uh, second from the right on the top. <laughs> 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 Friendship Bear and uh, my sister had Sunshine Bear, which is right next to him. And aren't they all Friendship, friendship Bears? I mean, they should be. I mean, they're friendly, right? Yes, but they had different names. <laughs> That's kind of weird to see the him one out for being friendship bear when they're all friendly, except I guess for that blue one at the top. He doesn't look too happy. The cloud was he? I don't know. He was like Grumpy Bear or something. I can't remember. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I didn't have him. <laughs> uh, all of these had shows too, right? Like there was Care Bears. They're Rainbow Bright. We we didn't touch on as much of the girl stuff. Um, uh, okay, here's another one that's been ruined in modern day. I don't remember a lot of girl cartoons from the 90s. It seemed like it was an early 80s thing where they it was, had. Yeah, this was more 80s. Um, here. I wonder why they, they started stop making a bunch of cartoons targeted for girls in particular. The My Little Ponies. I had several of these, uh, you know, it was collectibles. Gr girls would, you know, you'd want to have a few different kinds. They would do different. Some were fuzzy like this one. Um, they all had different names, different color hair. They would come with a brush. You could brush their hair. Now, totally ruined by pervy adult men who've gotten really into my little ponies and call themselves bronies uh mr chris and i did a <laughs> whole episode on bronies now i know mm. i know for a fact there's at least one person in our audience who is a brony and at some point i'm I, sorry we haven't done it yet but we're we are going to do this as long as you're still interested we are going to interview you because we would like to hear your opinion because i know it's not all pervy men but there are some pervy men there are <laughs> um and i'm not saying all of you bronies but some of you and Anyway, uh, we will talk. We will have that interview with a brony at some point because I want to know what the attraction is for adults. Me too. Right. Okay. Those were some of the ones we had. Also, this one. Hold on. You didn't mention this show. Uh, I don't know if you watched it or not, but. <laughs> this is an 80s show and I had I don't remember having toys of these characters but I had stationery another kind of a girl thing I guess you know to write letters and it had it came with letter envelopes and paper that had this is the get along gang let me just cut to it do you remember the get along gang no I've never <laughs> heard of them like what are these things <laughs> I'm going to sing. I can still remember. I have not watched this since it aired in like 1982 or three or something, but I still remember the get along gang, get along gang. Each one so special in their own way. No. Yes. Dottie, the dog. What? You, you don't know any of these. No, <laughs> this is creepy. This is You're not creeped creepy. out by power. I'm creeped out by this. no, I want to. I wonder if we could play just a little tiny bit. We're gonna get in so much trouble here. What? What's that B 
beaver so happy. I, don't know. <laughs> I can't believe. It. Okay, yeah, this is this is before your time. Who else Ooh. knows? This is just a girl thing, I guess. Uh, I think. Thank this... you, Ryan. Ryan says it's definitely creeper than Power Rangers. No, it's not. Look, there's the bad guys, the communists. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're reptiles. The bad guys are reptiles, of course, right? <laughs> This you gotta go look this up now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I should I taught you something. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's... thank you. I think it's the women maybe who watch this. Helena Helena, Must good be. to see you. Says I remember they had a song about how cheaters never prosper. Yes. <laughs> Ryan, definitely creepier than Power Rangers. What are mm -hmm. you talking Thank about? You. No way. This man gets it. No way. Um, uh, and Pink about I had an ex-boyfriend who was a brony. He would talk about it being the power of friendship. It was still weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> power of friendship. Okay. <laughs> I was big into the get along gang. <clears throat> Okay. I, I had never heard of it. Well, yep. Uh, let's do a couple funny ones. Couple do, funnies. Uh, do the, the uh, Ninja Turtles ones first. Uncomfortable Ninja Turtles? Yeah. This is a funny clip from uh, the Oprah show. And then I think it was mid 90s, early mid 90s, they did a live action Ninja Turtles tour. They have people dressed up as Ninja Turtles and they like sing and dance or do Kung Fu or something. I don't know. But here's a segment of them on the. Uh, oh, Oprah no. Show. So if you're new here at the end of our popped culture episodes, again, this is a show mystery. Chris and I do uh, every other Wednesday at eight o'clock central. We have fun. It's a little bit of frivolity. We look at different issues in pop culture. Um, we go down a rabbit hole together and with you guys and have a bit of fun and talk about how it relates to culture. And um at the end of every show, we sometimes like to end with just some bits of funny that are somehow related to what we talked about tonight. So here we go. Let me ask you this. Do you sometimes wish that April was a turtle? Whoa, oh, definitely. Oh, conceptually, that works for me. You know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, Where you going? Oprah, I'm going to crack myself up. <laughs> Oprah, I've been trying to talk her into an interspecies relationship for months now. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> well, well, man. And she won't do it. She huh? can't no, hold her breath no, she can't do it. Her. The biggest April problem is she can't hold her breath long enough, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on, keep playing. What? <laughs> well, okay. Don't have to This is too good. He makes a, a joke about sex. Uh, this is a kid's thing. Remember, adult humor, and they cut to the. I just have. Can we watch it just one more, last one? Last yes. Time? She can't hold her breath long enough, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Come on, Paternal. Do you want to say something? I just wanted to say that. Uh, the one thing, <laughs> the one thing about the turtles be, being in a, a reporter, it's hard for me not to analyze. And the good thing about these guys. Uh, <laughs> That yes. kid, Tai Fung, that kid is all of us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Surprise, it's not a meme. That's got to be a meme. Someone use that kid. Shell shock kid. But I'm done. Make it a meme. But I'm done. Yeah. Shell shock. <laughs> okay, that was great. How are you going to top that? I don't know. Well, the, the next video, I'm now afraid to play because we kept getting popped. It's, so, the, this, the, the one, I don't even know. Is it the He Man one? No, it was the the Alex Jones one. It, it samples a uh, theme song from a cartoon, but they remixed him over the cartoons. So I don't, I don't. Uh, I'm afraid. Oh, uh, we're gonna get popped for this. I just pulled yeah. it up. We can't play this. Yeah, well, it's yeah. funny though. Maybe mm. we'll have to do a Rumble exclusive sometime of all the content we can't play on YouTube. I'm gonna do a Rumble exclusive anyway. We should just do one and hang out there and be like party okay i'm putting the link in the chat this is the one that, was... that allows us to play some music because i really want to do another music themed one where we just play music man yeah and we can do that for those who've 
uh, are new here, we did, uh, Mr. Chris and I did a couple episodes about music through the decades and got totally taken down from YouTube. It did eventually can't come back like 10 months later, just randomly just pop back up. <laughs> That's because <laughs> every time they take one down, I have to go in and I file, I basically appeal it, say, hey, it's fair use. We're just sampling tiny clips. And then they take their sweet time and sometimes it comes back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, what else? Um, We can do either the Beavis one or we can do the He-Man one. We've played the He-Man one before, but... The He-Man one is is so funny, but we've played it several times, and also with the music, uh, I'm afraid. Let's do the Be the Legend of Beavis. Okay, we we'll do this one. We'll play about a minute of it. I queued it up at the time, so. Okay. Now, this is from an episode of Beavis and Butthead? No, so somebody took a Legend of Zelda episode and dubbed Beavis and Butthead's lines on top of it. What? Okay. Yeah. Uh... What the hell are you doing here? Daddy! Get it back to Daddy! I thought of something. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, dude. Do it. <laughs> Die! Ah, don't touch me, asswipe! <laughs> I'm a little disappointed in you. <laughs> Later, dude. <laughs> Zap him in the butt. <laughs> That's close. Whoa. You're definitely going to hell. <laughs> Here I come. <laughs> <laughs> you you would totally love this <laughs> yeah but that whole video is like 10 minutes long man uh one last one what about fat abbott no that's from uh south park mm, will we get popped i don't know we played some before but you never know with these people mm. Maybe you want to play a few six i don't know well, if we go out, we go out big. <laughs> you just play so, a little bit of it. You don't play the whole thing. It's like a minute. Uh, Got some cursing in it, by the way. Get my wedding ring out of the sink. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, hey, hey. What's going on? <laughs> hey, that addict, you need to lose weight. I lose weight when I feel like it, bitch. Shut the bitch up. Get up, your ass. Whoa, dude. Sweet. You think you slick, you punk ass, blasphemous, dope fiend, bitch. <laughs> I had my back seven times last week. I bust a cop in your head. Wow, cartoons are getting really dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Classic South Park. Oh, man. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for finding these funny clips. And Yeah. I hope people saw all of them as much as they could. Jeez. As much as you can. Yeah. We'll, have, we'll have to start. Now that we're simulcasting on Rumble, um, We'll have to pick a couple that we do just maybe on Rumble if we know that we're going to mm. sample a lot of stuff like tonight. Or like start a lot. on YouTube and then go to Rumble so we can yeah. start playing stuff we can't play on YouTube. Exactly. It's a good idea. Uh, which, speaking of, if you are subscribed here, if you're a regular, if you like the show, uh, if you have a Rumble account, please go and subscribe to our Rumble channel because we might, we'll probably have to do that at some point in the future, do Rumble exclusives. And we want to build up the community there community fellowship, right? <laughs> That's the Gary's like, Gary doesn't like the word community. I understand why. Um, let's see. The channel there is. Here yeah. Which one? Make sure. Cause some type in, there's like multiple channels that come up. Sure yeah. Right this now. is why it was hard for me to figure out rumble getting on there. Damage and I helped me because you have an account, which is a channel, but then you have like your channel channel. It was weird. So this is it. It's it's deprogram with Carrie Smith and the URL is real Carrie Smith, which is the same here and on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and everywhere else. So real Carrie Smith. Um, and you can go and find it there. I, I really had fun hanging out with you tonight. 
Uh, Davina says, follow both. Yeah, follow both. That way you'll see if I do anything on the personal one, I guess. Um, but uh, we'll see you guys there because we're, we're definitely going to do something that's just Rumble exclusive. If we do another music one, we have to because you can't. You can't do, I, I think it's sort of, if we just show a couple clips, we're okay. But if if we're doing a really clip heavy episode like tonight, they always pop us. Yeah. So, so weird. Cause I've seen other YouTubers who've done like compilation videos. Yeah. Like there's one YouTuber who did compilation of like all eighties intros. They're like, he has several videos that are hour long. They just have all these intros in them. And those videos have been up for years and have a million views each. It's like, yeah. well, why is ours getting pop? And we, we only right. played, you know, maybe what dozen cartoon intros, right? Maybe less than that before we got popped, of course. Well, okay. Before the next episode, I'm gonna try and find my Charmkins toy so I can show you on air, Mr. Chris. Do it's it somewhere in you know when we moved into this place. It's probably in a box, but <laughs> I find I'm sure it that raccoon doesn't right. get yeah. it. Also, you have to come. You have to come to the antiquing with me because this one place just has a ton of Star Trek glasses from the eighties <laughs> and uh, tr Star Trek trading cards and all kinds of stuff. I want you to come see it. So, oh, definitely. I want to get a, a whiskey glass with Starfleet logo on it. That'd be sweet. <laughs> if I, I see one, Ronald and Ale out of it. Oh. oh, if I see one, I'll pick it up for you. Okay, sweet. You guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. This was a long one. Thanks for hanging out through our technical problems, getting popped by the, the YouTube popo and power outages and all of it. We had so much fun. Bungalow Logic. This is a great show as always going to split. Thanks. Thanks, chat. Love y'all. You guys are the funniest chat. Have a good night. Have a good night, uh, Ryan. And um, I will see you. No so usually Fridays at one o'clock central is the live Krafafi break or deprogram show. I'm going to be traveling with my husband to a music fest uh, for the Eclipse weekend, and I'm going to try and live stream. We'll see how it goes. I'll do an announcement if it's going to work out or not. If not, I'm going to have a pre-recorded video for you guys, but there will be something before the end of the week. Um, have a good night. Past your bedtime, Kevin. Ours too. <laughs> Misty Chris, as always, it's been fun. Hell yeah, it has. And thank you, chat. You guys are hilarious. Here we go.